Hey B. How's it going? Great. Got my head in the clouds today, as usual. How about you? Same here. I'm a DevOps engineer specializing in cloud optimization. Nice. We're always looking to improve our cloud services. What tips do you have for us? Well, the first thing is to make sure you have proper monitoring and analysis tools in place. Absolutely. We use a mix of open source and proprietary tools to keep an eye on performance and stability. That's great to hear. Another tip is to make sure you properly size your VMs to avoid resource contention. You got it. We have strict policies on resource allocation so that our VMs don't cause any bottlenecks. Love it. Another big one is to always keep your software up to date so you have access to the latest patches, features, and enhancements. We're on the same page there too. We have automated updates in place to keep our software fresh and lean without being too disruptive. Perfect. And don't forget about disaster recovery and data backups. Yes, that's vital. We have comprehensive business continuity plans and regular backups to prepare for any worst-case scenarios. Sounds like you're ticking all the boxes. One final tip is to constantly monitor and tweak your security protocols to make sure they're up-to-date and effective. Absolutely. Our security team is always on the lookout for potential vulnerabilities and proactive measures to counteract them. Awesome. It's great to hear that you're on top of everything. Thanks for the chat, B. Likewise. Keep rocking those DevOps skills. Good morning. Can I interest you in some freshly baked Chinese pastries? Good morning. Of course, what do you recommend? How about our signature pork floss buns? They're soft and fluffy with just the right amount of savory filling. Sounds delicious. I'll take one of those. And what about drinks? We have a variety of options. Our most popular is the classic Hong Kong style milk tea. That sounds perfect. Can I get it hot and sweetened? Absolutely. One pork floss bun and a hot, sweetened milk tea coming right up. Thank you. So what got you interested in baking Chinese pastries? Well, I grew up in a family of bakers and always loved the smell of fresh bread. When I moved to Shanghai, I fell in love with the local pastry shops and wanted to learn how to make them myself. That's really cool. And how do you make your pork floss buns? We start with a simple sweet bread dough, fill it with homemade pork floss and a touch of soy sauce, and then steam it until it's fluffy and delicious. Yum, I can't wait to try it. So, do you have a favorite pastry yourself? It's hard to choose, but I just love our egg custard tarts. The creamy filling and flaky pastry shell are the perfect combination. I'll have one of those next time for sure. Thanks so much for the delicious pastry and drink. Hey there. How's the system architecture coming along? It's been great, but I have to admit, I'm a little stuck on choosing the right design pattern. I completely understand. Have you considered the factory method pattern? Yeah, I've been considering that one. But I'm not sure if it's the best fit for our project. Hmm, well have you thought about the adapter pattern instead? It might work better with the existing code base. That's actually a great idea. Thanks for the suggestion. No problem, I'm always happy to help out. Say, have you heard the one about the software engineer and the hardware engineer? No, I haven't. What's the joke? Well, the hardware engineer says to the software engineer, you program us to victory, and we'll make sure you never have to do push-ups again. Haha, -ha, that's a good one. But let's get back to work, we still have a deadline to meet. Of course, let's do it. Remember, we're like Batman and Robin, except our superpowers are coding and problem-solving. Laughs, I like that. Let's go save the day. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 compliance? Yes, I have. It's a standard for information security management systems, right? That's correct. Do you know what it entails? Well, from what I understand, it involves implementing policies and procedures to ensure the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. Exactly. And it's becoming more and more important for companies to be compliant these days. I agree. With all the cyber threats out there, it's important to make sure our information is secure. That's why I think it's important for us to start thinking about implementing ISO 27001 compliance measures in our own company. Hmm, do you think it would be a lot of work? It definitely would require some effort, but I think it would be worth it in the long run. What kind of measures do you think we would need to implement? Well, for starters, we'd need to develop a comprehensive information security policy and establish procedures for managing risk. That sounds like a lot of work, but I can see how it would be beneficial. 
One thing that's great about ISO 27001 is that it's a flexible standard, so it can be adapted to different organizations and industries. That's good to know. It definitely seems like something we should look into. Absolutely. And in addition to the security benefits, being ISO 27001 compliant can also be a selling point for potential clients. Ah, uh, I see. So it's not just about protecting our own information, but also about showing others that we take security seriously. Precisely. And with the way things are going, I think it's going to become even more important in the years to come. All right, you've convinced me. Let's start looking into ISO 27001 compliance measures for our company. Hey B, how's it going? I heard you've been working on some natural language processing stuff recently. Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to use NLP to analyze news articles for our media company. Interesting. So what kind of techniques have you been using to classify the articles? So far, I've been using a combination of sentiment analysis and named entity recognition to determine the key topics and emotional tone of each piece. Wow, that sounds pretty complex. How accurate have your results been so far? It's still a work in progress, but I've been getting pretty good results with some of the more straightforward articles. Anything with a lot of technical jargon or nuanced language tends to mess with the algorithms, though. Yeah, that's always a challenge with these kinds of projects. Have you considered using machine learning to help with the classification? Yeah, I've actually been working on building a custom model to do just that. But training the model is taking a lot longer than I anticipated. I bet. Have you considered using transfer learning to speed things up? I hear it can be pretty effective for these kinds of tasks. That's a great idea. I hadn't considered it before, but I think it could definitely help. Do you have any resources you could recommend for implementing transfer learning? Yeah, I can send you some articles and code examples I've come across. But be warned, it can be a bit of a steep learning curve. No problem. I'm always up for a challenge. Thanks for the help. Sure thing. One other thing I've been wondering is how we could present the results of your analysis in a more user-friendly way to our clients. Any thoughts? Well, one idea I had was to create an interactive dashboard that visually displays the key takeaways from each article. That way, users could quickly see the most important information without having to wade through all the text themselves. That's a great idea. Do you think you could mock up a quick prototype of that for us? Yeah, I could definitely do that. I already have some ideas for how to structure the dashboard and what kinds of metrics to include. Awesome, can't wait to see it. So what's next on your NLP to-do list? Well, I'd like to see if I can use some more advanced techniques like topic modeling and deep learning to improve the accuracy even further. But that's going to require a lot more research and experimentation. Sounds like you've got your work cut out for you. Do you need any help with anything? Actually, I could use a second pair of eyes on some of the code I've been writing. Would you be willing to take a look at some of it? Sure thing. I'm not an NLP expert, but I'm pretty comfortable with Python and some of the data processing libraries you've been using. Awesome, thanks. I'll send you some files later today. No problem, happy to help. Let's grab lunch soon and catch up on how everything's going. Sounds good to me. I could use a break from looking at code all day. Good morning. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling a bit under the weather. I've been coughing a lot and my throat hurts. I see. Let me take your temperature first. Hmm. 99 degrees. It seems you have a mild fever. Oh, really? I didn't even notice. Yes, it's important to monitor your temperature when you're not feeling well. Have you been taking any medication? Yeah, I've been taking some cough syrup, but it doesn't seem to be doing much. I'm going to prescribe you some antibiotics to help with the infection. Also, try to get some rest and drink lots of fluids. Thanks, Doc. I'll do my best to follow your advice. No problem. And if you need anything else in the meantime, don't hesitate to reach out. Actually, can you recommend a good show to watch while I recover? Laughs, sure. Have you seen The Office? It always cheers me up. Smiling, no, I haven't. I'll give it a try. Thanks again, Doc. You're welcome. Take care and feel better soon. Hey B, how's it going? Not bad, just a little tired from all the designing for the new social media app. I hear ya, it's been tough developing it too. But the good news is that we're almost done. That's great to hear. So what do you think we need to make it flow better? Well, I was thinking the user interface could use a little work. Maybe we could simplify it a bit. I agree. It's too cluttered right now. 
How about we add some color to differentiate the different sections? That's a great idea. We can make the newsfeed one color and the messaging section another color. And we can also make the profile section a different color too. Maybe make it more eye-catching? Absolutely. We want to make sure the user is engaged from the moment they open the app. Speaking of engaging, how can we make the app more interactive? Well, what about adding some fun features like quizzes or polls? That could really get users involved. I like that idea. Maybe we can make it customizable so users can create their own polls for their friends to participate in. Definitely. Customization is key to keeping users engaged. What about notifications? How can we make them less annoying for users but still important enough to keep them coming back? We could give the option for users to customize what notifications they receive. That way they only get notified about what they want. I love that. It gives the user control and makes them a part of the app's design. Exactly. And if we make sure the app runs smoothly, no glitches or bugs, users will be more likely to stick around. Agreed. A smooth app is a happy app. Well, I think that's a wrap. We've got some solid ideas to work with. Sounds good to me. Let's get to work and make this app the best it can be. Hey there. Mind if I join you? I couldn't help but notice you've got your laptop out. No problem. Always nice to have company. What brings you to Starbucks today? Well, I'm a web designer and I'm currently trying to improve the search function on my client's website. But, I'm a little stuck. Any chance you can help? Sure. I'm a database engineer, so I work with search functionality all the time. What seems to be the issue? So, right now the search results are all over the place. The users are complaining that they can't seem to find what they're looking for. Ah, uh, that's frustrating. Have you tried refining your search algorithm? I've adjusted the algorithm, but it's still not getting the results we want. What do you suggest? Well, there are a few things you can try. Are you using any filters for the search results? Yes, we have filters for different categories of products. Sounds good. Have you ensured that they're working properly? And have you considered adding more filters or search criteria to further refine the results? That's a good idea. I'll make sure the filters are working correctly and perhaps add a few more criteria for the search. Great. You could also try using fuzzy search. It's a technique that searches for partial matches rather than exact matches. Fuzzy search? That's a new one for me. Can you explain more? Sure. So, let's say a user types in Apple. Fuzzy search would not only return results for the exact word Apple, but also for similar words like apples or apple pie. Oh, I see. That sounds like a very useful tool. I'll definitely look into adding that feature. And one more thing, have you considered optimizing your database indexing? Hmm, I haven't really thought about that. Can you elaborate? Sure. Indexing your database correctly can help with search performance. It helps the database quickly find relevant data. Ah, uh, got it. So, by optimizing the indexing, the search results will populate more quickly? Exactly. It should improve search performance and speed up the search results. Thanks so much for all these suggestions. I can't wait to implement them and see how the search function improves. No problem at all. Let me know if you need any help. It was nice meeting you. Same to you. Thanks again. Hey there, I noticed the system's been acting up lately. Have you encountered any issues? Yeah, I've noticed it too. Seems like we've been having some technical difficulties. Do you have any idea what's causing it? Not really, but I've been trying to troubleshoot the issue. Maybe we can tackle it together. Awesome. Teamwork makes the dream work. Where should we start? Let's begin by checking the error logs. They might give us some clues. Good idea. I'm going to pull them up right now. Hmm, it looks like there's been some errors with the database connections. Have you checked that? Uh, no I haven't. Let me investigate further. Okay, while you do that, I'm going to try resetting the server and see if that resolves the issue. Sounds like a plan. Keep me updated on your progress. Sure thing. Have you tried clearing the cache in the meantime? Not yet, but let me get on that right now. Great, you're a multitasking machine. Hopefully one of these steps will solve the problem. Fingers crossed, I'm feeling optimistic about this. Me too, we got this in the bag. If all else fails, we can always call for tech support. Agreed, but let's try everything we can before we wave the white flag. Haha, uh -huh, you're right. We're not quitters. Let's keep on troubleshooting until we find the solution. 
Absolutely, I'm glad we're on the same page. Thanks for collaborating with me on this. No problem, it's always a pleasure to work with a fellow problem solver. We can toast to our victory once this is resolved. Hey B, have you ever thought about how we can optimize resource allocation in our company? Absolutely, it's one of the biggest challenges we face as a large company. I'm a system administrator, so my focus is on hardware and software resources. What about you, A? Well, as a back-end engineer, my focus is more on optimizing database and server performance. But we both share the same goal of improving resource allocation efficiency. That's right. I think we can start by better understanding our usage patterns and making sure we have the right hardware and software in place. We also need to make sure our resources are being used efficiently without any waste. Yes, and as a back-end engineer, I know we can optimize our database queries and reduce server load by using caching and other techniques. We can also make sure our code is scalable and properly optimized. Great point, A. And as a system administrator, I can keep an eye on resources and make sure everything is. Hey there, how's it going? I'm doing pretty well, thanks for asking. How about you? Can't complain. So, we're tasked with creating a game with smooth graphics and engaging gameplay. Any ideas? Well, first things first, let's make sure our graphics engine is up to snuff. Have you considered optimizing any of our processes? Yeah, actually, I've been working on optimizing our rendering pipeline. I read some articles and found some decent new techniques that could help cut down on some bottlenecks. That's great. I've also been thinking about more immersive gameplay mechanics. Maybe we could try implementing some reactive environments that change depending on what the player does. That's an awesome idea. I was thinking about something similar, actually. Maybe we could add some dynamic lighting effects to certain areas to make it more engaging? Perfect. And what about sound design? We can't neglect that. Agreed. I was thinking about hiring a composer to create an original soundtrack for the game. That would definitely help with immersion. Absolutely. Okay, we're making progress. What about character animations and movement? Yeah, that's definitely something we need to tweak. I was thinking about using motion capture technology to make the animations more natural. Great idea. We're definitely on the right track. Let's keep working together and make this game the best it can be. Agreed. Thanks for the productive brainstorming session. Hey, have you had a chance to look at the new system documentation yet? No, not yet. Is it worth the read? Absolutely. It's clear, concise, and easy to understand. I think it will be a great asset to our team. That's good to hear. I always appreciate good documentation. Do you think it covers all the necessary information? I do. I found everything I was looking for, and it even included some helpful tips and tricks. That's great. Speaking of tips and tricks, have you found any shortcuts within the system? Actually, yes. There's a feature that allows you to quickly navigate to different sections with just a few clicks. Oh, I need to know more about that. Can you show me? Of course. Let me pull up the documentation and walk you through it. Wow, that's awesome. I had no idea that shortcut existed. It's definitely a game changer. That's why it's important to have good documentation. You never know what hidden gems you might find. Agreed. I'll have to read through the whole thing now to see what else I might be missing. You definitely should. And if you come across anything new, be sure to share it with the team. All right, I have to get back to work. But let me know if you have any questions about the documentation. Will do. Thanks for your help. No problem. Talk to you soon. Hi there. You look busy. What are you up to? Hi. Yes, it's a busy day today. We've got a lot of fresh seafood coming in. That sounds amazing. I'm a fisherman and I was wondering if you'd be interested in buying some of my catch. Of course. Fresh catch is always welcome. What did you bring in today? I caught some cod, flounder, and a few lobsters. Wow, that's impressive. I'll definitely take some of that off your hands. How much are you asking for it? As a fellow seafood lover, I'll give you a good deal. How about $10 per pound for the cod and flounder, and $30 for each lobster? That sounds fair to me. How fresh is it? I caught these this morning, so it couldn't be fresher. Excellent. I'll take all of it then. I'll prepare some special dishes with your catch as a special menu for the day. Do you want to come by later for a meal? That would be fantastic. I brought with me a jar of my homemade tartar sauce to go with the fish. You might want to give it a try. 
That's a great idea. I love trying new things. Thanks for thinking of me. You're welcome. I'm happy to have found a good home for my cat. And I'm happy to have access to freshly caught seafood. It's always a pleasure to serve my customers quality food. It's great to see that we can support each other in this way. I'm sure we'll work together again in the future. Absolutely. It's always good to have a reliable supply of fresh seafood. Well, it's been nice chatting with you. I'll drop off the seafood at your kitchen later this afternoon. Fantastic. See you then. Enjoy your day. Hey B, how's your homework coming along? It's going okay, but I'm struggling with this math problem. Can you help me out? Sure, let's take a look. Hmm, I think I remember this from high school. That was a long time ago, Mom. Hey, watch it. I'm not that old yet. Ha, uh, sorry. So how do we solve it? Well, we need to use the Pythagorean theorem. The what theorem? The Pythagorean theorem. It's a formula to find the length of the sides of a right triangle. Cool, I didn't know that. Thanks for teaching me, Mom. No problem, that's what I'm here for. So, how was your day at school? It was good. We did some experiments in science class. That sounds interesting. What did you learn? We learned about chemical reactions and how to make a volcano explode. Wow, that's pretty cool. Did you get to see it happen? Yeah, it was awesome. The volcano erupted and lava went everywhere. Sounds like quite the spectacle. Did you get any on you? Just a little bit, but it's okay. I was wearing my lab coat. Good thinking. You don't want to ruin your clothes. Yeah, definitely not. Thanks for reminding me to bring it home. No problem. Do you need help with any other homework? Actually, I think I'm good for now. Thanks again, Mom. Anytime, sweetie. Just let me know if you need me to explain anything else. Hey there. How's it going? Not bad, thanks. And yourself? Can't complain. We've got a new project coming up and it seems pretty exciting. It's a dynamic web page with some interesting specifications. Sounds good. What are some of the specific requirements? Well, the web page needs to be aesthetically pleasing, but more importantly it needs to have a smooth and responsive user experience. We want to make sure that the site is as fast as possible so that users don't get frustrated. Absolutely. Speed is crucial. Have you considered using the content delivery network? Yeah, I think we definitely need to look into using a CDN. That should help us speed up delivery times and improve overall performance. That's a great idea. And what about browser compatibility? Good point. We'll need to make sure that the site works well on all major browsers, including IE. Right. Speaking of optimizing for experience, have you thought about minimizing HTTP requests? Yes, we definitely want to keep requests to a minimum. Aside from using a CDN, we can compress our images and minify our code to help reduce file size. Great. And what about caching? That's something we can't overlook. We need to be able to make use of caching so that users don't have to wait for content to load that they've already seen in the past. It's definitely worth looking into. And how about JavaScript? JS is a must for this project. We can use it to create dynamic, interactive features that will keep users engaged. For sure. But we also need to make sure that the code is properly optimized so as not to impact performance. Of course. We'll make sure to test the page regularly to identify any bottlenecks and optimize where necessary. That sounds like a plan. How about security? Is that a concern for this project? It's always a concern, but fortunately we have some great security plugins available that should help us keep the site secure. Excellent. And finally, what about accessibility? We want to make sure that the site is as accessible as possible for all users. Absolutely. We'll make sure to incorporate the necessary tools and features to ensure that every visitor can fully enjoy the site. Sounds like we're on the right track. With your skills and our knowledge combined, I'm confident we can create an amazing dynamic web page that will exceed our clients' expectations. Great. Let's get started and make this project a success. Hey there, have you heard about the new enterprise website development project that we'll be working on? Yes, heard about it. It's going to be developed using jQuery and ASP.NET MVC5, right? Yes, that's right. So, what's your take on jQuery? Do you think it will be an effective tool for this project? Well, I'm not really thrilled about using jQuery. I'm more of a React guy, but I guess we'll have to make it work. 
haha, yeah, I understand. But jQuery seems to be the popular choice for this kind of project, so we have to stick with it. Absolutely. On the other hand, I'm excited to use ASP.NET MVC5. It's a powerful framework with a lot of useful features. Yes, I agree. It makes it easy to develop scalable and maintainable web applications. Definitely. So, do you have any specific ideas for the website design or features? Well, I was thinking of implementing a responsive design so that it works well on different devices. That's a good idea. We should also focus on user experience and efficient data management. Agreed. Also, we should definitely test the website thoroughly for any bugs or issues. Absolutely. Testing is a crucial part of the development process to ensure that the website runs smoothly. We have quite a lot to do, but I'm looking forward to working together on this project. Same here. I'm sure we'll make an awesome team. Good morning. Welcome to Melbourne City. My name is Sarah, and I'll be your tour guide today. Are you excited about exploring Australia's rich history and culture? Good morning, Sarah. I'm John, and I'm extremely excited to experience everything Melbourne has to offer. I've always been fascinated by Aboriginal culture and wildlife of Australia. That's wonderful, John. We have plenty of that for you to experience. In fact, we'll be visiting a local Aboriginal art gallery and a sanctuary where you can get up close and personal with kangaroos and koalas. Wow, that sounds amazing. I can't wait to see those adorable animals. Absolutely. But before that, I thought we'd start with exploring the historical landmarks in the city. We'll start with Federation Square, a cultural hub in the city center. That sounds interesting. Can you tell me more about it? Of course. Federation Square is a modern cultural precinct, home to major museums, exhibitions, and cultural festivals. It also has some magnificent architectural designs, such as the atrium, which can hold up to 2,000 people. I'm loving this so far. What other landmarks will we visit? Another landmark worth visiting is the Shrine of Remembrance, a beautiful memorial for soldiers who lost their lives in wars. It's also an important place to learn about the country's military history. That sounds really solemn but undoubtedly educational. My next question is, can you recommend any places to taste some local Aussie food? Yes, absolutely. We can visit Queen Victoria Market, which is known for its fresh produce, meats, and seafood. You can get everything from authentic Australian meat pies to vegan hot dogs. That sounds amazing, Sarah. Thank you for your recommendations. I'm looking forward to the rest of the day. My pleasure, John. I'm here to make your time in Melbourne as memorable as possible. Let's continue the tour. Hey B, great to see you. I heard you've been working with some huge datasets lately. Yes, that's right. We're seeing a lot of growth in our data and we need to figure out how to handle it. Well, that's where cloud technology can come in handy. By leveraging the cloud, we can scale up our processing power as needed. That sounds like a good solution. But how do we manage the security of our data once it's in the cloud? That is definitely a valid concern. We would need to make sure we have strong encryption and access controls in place. Do you have any recommendations for cloud providers that are particularly good for handling big data? Definitely. Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure both have great offerings for big data processing. That's helpful to know. And how do we ensure that our cloud infrastructure is cost-effective? Good question. We can use cloud cost optimization tools to monitor usage and find ways to reduce costs, such as shutting down idle resources. I see. It sounds like using the cloud can be a powerful tool for handling big data. Absolutely. And as cloud technology continues to evolve, we can expect even more powerful tools to become available in the future. Well, thanks for your insights, A. Hey. It's been great chatting with you. Anytime, B. Always happy to talk tech. Hi B, how's it going? Are you enjoying your time here at the farm? Hey, hey, it's going great. I love the peacefulness of the countryside. How about you? Same here, but there's always work to be done. Speaking of which, I need your help repairing the tractor. Sure thing, what seems to be the problem? Well, the engine won't start. I've checked the spark plugs and fuel pump, but can't find the issue. Let's take a look. Ah, uh, I see the problems that the batteries did. I'll get us a new one from the shed. Great catch, B. You're a lifesaver. While you're at it, can you also check the air filter and oil levels? No problem. It's always good to perform routine maintenance to avoid these issues in the first place. I couldn't agree more. 
As an agricultural engineer, I find it fascinating to see how technology and mechanics work together to enable farmers to grow crops efficiently. Same goes for me. As a mechanical engineer, I get to apply my knowledge to various industries, including agriculture. That's really cool. I know this tractor has been through a lot, but with our skills combined, we'll make sure it keeps running smoothly. Absolutely. It's all about teamwork and problem solving. Plus, it's fun to get your hands dirty and see the tangible results of your work. Agreed. And when we finally get this tractor humming again, we can reward ourselves with some fresh produce from the farm. Sounds like a plan. I can never say no to some homegrown fruits and veggies. Hey B, have you noticed that we're not testing everything thoroughly enough? Yeah, I have. What do you suggest we do to improve our test coverage? We could start with adding more test cases, but we don't want to sacrifice speed for thoroughness. That's a good point. Maybe we could automate some of our tests to speed things up. Yeah, but we need to make sure our automation covers all possible scenarios. Absolutely. Have you ever tried exploratory testing? It allows us to discover new issues that traditional testing might miss. I've heard of it, but I'm not too familiar with it. Can you explain how it works? Basically, it's testing without a set script. We explore the software, looking for issues as we go. Interesting. How do we document our findings? We can take screenshots or notes as we explore the software. It's less structured, but it's a great way to find new issues. That sounds like a fun way to test. Have we considered using professional testers that specialize in exploratory testing? We haven't, but it's a great idea. Professional testers can provide valuable insight and help us discover new issues. How about we involve the development team earlier in the testing process? That way, they can identify potential issues before we begin testing. That's a great idea. It'll help us prevent issues before they even occur. Is there anything else we could do to improve our test coverage? We could perform regression testing whenever we make changes to the software to ensure we're not breaking existing features. Good suggestion. It's always best to catch issues before they get to production. Definitely our end users will thank us for it. Agreed. Thanks for the brainstorming session, B. Let's implement these ideas and improve our test coverage. Sounds good to me, hey. Let's make it happen. Hey B, how's it going? Not too bad, just enjoying the summer weather. How about you? Same here. So, what do we have on the docket for today's maintenance? We need to check the calibration of the machines in the production line and replace any worn-out parts. Sounds like a plan. By the way, have you seen the new production supervisor around? Yeah, I met her yesterday. Seems like she knows her way around the machinery. Good to hear. These machines can be quite temperamental at times. True, but with your expertise and my good humor, we can handle anything. Laughs, I like your positive attitude. Thanks, I figure life's too short to waste on negativity. Agreed. Speaking of positivity, do you have any fun plans for the weekend? Actually, I'm going to a music festival with some friends. You? Just planning on getting some rest and maybe catching up on some reading. Nice, I might have to borrow some of your book recommendations. Anytime, happy to share. Now, let's get to work and make these machines shine. Hey, bread maker B. How's it going? Not too bad, Chef A. Just needing some dough for our bread rolls. Ah, uh, I see. I'm preparing the batter for our lemon tarts right now. Yum, those are always a hit with the customers. Speaking of which, have you tried our new blueberry muffins? Actually, I have. They're delicious. You really did a great job with those. Ah, uh, thanks. I'm glad you like them. It's always nice to get positive feedback. Absolutely. We need to make sure we're always striving to improve our craft, right? Exactly. And speaking of improvement, I've been experimenting with a new recipe for our croissants. I think it could be a real winner. That's fantastic news. Let me know if you need any help testing them out. Will do. And if you ever need any help on the savory side of things, don't hesitate to let me know. Thanks, Breadmaker B. It's great to have such a talented and supportive colleague. Likewise, Chef A, together, we can keep whipping up the best bread and pastries in town. Absolutely. Now, let's get back to work and make these lemon tarts and bread rolls the best they can be for our customers. Wow, the view from up here is absolutely stunning, isn't it? Yeah, I can't believe I get to capture this on camera. The colors and scenery are surreal. I've been climbing these peaks for years, yet the natural beauty still takes my breath away. 
That's why I love my job. Every day is different and always challenging. You know, I have a few tips on how you can capture the perfect shot. I'm all ears. I'm always looking for ways to improve my photography skills. Well, first, try shooting at different angles and heights to create depth in your photos. That's a great idea. What else do you suggest? Experiment with different lighting and filters to enhance the colors of nature. Excellent tip. I'll definitely try that out. Don't forget your tripod. That way, you can stabilize your shot and avoid blurs. Thank you. You're a lifesaver. Speaking of which, would you mind posing for a shot? Sure, but only if you promise to capture my good side. Of course, I'll make you look like a mountain climbing pro. I am a pro, thank you very much. All right, all right, just strike a pose and let's get the shot. How does this look? Perfect. It's a keeper. Great, I can't wait to see it. I'm glad I could help you with some photography tips. Hi there, it's nice to finally meet you in person. Yes, it is. I'm excited to discuss online advertising and market analysis with you. Me too. So, what do you think is the most effective way to target consumers online? Well, I believe that a combination of social media advertising and targeted search engine marketing can be very effective. That makes sense to me. What about the importance of data analysis in marketing? Analyzing data is crucial in finding out what works and what doesn't. Without it, we would just be guessing. I couldn't agree more. However, do you ever find yourself getting lost in data? Sometimes, but that's when it's important to zoom out and look at the big picture. After all, we don't want to miss what's really important. Very true. So, what do you do for fun when you're not analyzing data? I'm a big fan of cooking and trying new recipes. How about you? I enjoy hiking and exploring new places. Have you been on any interesting hikes lately? Yes, I recently did a hike up to the Hollywood sign in Los Angeles. It was an incredible view. That's incredible. I'll have to add that to my bucket list. Speaking of bucket lists, what's on yours? I'd love to travel to Japan, experience the unique culture, and try authentic sushi. That sounds amazing. I'm hoping to skydive someday. It's been on my bucket list for years. Wow, that takes a lot of bravery. But I'm sure it's an amazing experience. Definitely. Well, it's been great chatting with you. Let's catch up again soon. Sounds good. Take care. Hi there, I'm really excited to be working on this project with you. Me too. I think designing a game interface is one of the most fun parts of game development. Definitely. So, what do you think is the key to creating a truly immersive interface? I think it's all about creating an experience that feels seamless and intuitive. The player shouldn't have to struggle to figure out how to navigate the interface. That's really important. How do you go about achieving that? It starts with a lot of playtesting and user feedback. We need to be constantly looking at how players are using the interface and making adjustments based on their reactions. Right. And what about aesthetics? How important is the look and feel of the interface? It's huge. The visual design sets the tone for the whole game. It needs to be cohesive and engaging, but not distracting. I see what you mean. And what about incorporating animations and other visual elements? Those can be really effective tools for guiding the player's attention and creating a sense of progression but they have to be used sparingly or they can become overwhelming. Absolutely. It's a fine balance. Well, I'm really excited to get to work with you on this and create something amazing. Same here. I can't wait to see what we come up with. Wow, the underwater world in Okinawa is truly amazing. Indeed it is. Have you spotted any interesting sea creatures so far? Yes, I saw a school of colorful fish swimming past me earlier. It was so beautiful. That's awesome. Did you manage to take any pictures of them? Yes, I did. I can't wait to show them to my friends back home. Speaking of pictures, have you seen the sea turtles around here? They are really photogenic. Not yet, but I'm keeping my eyes peeled for them. Seeing a sea turtle is definitely on my bucket list. I hope you get to see one soon. They are cuter in person than in pictures. Hey, what's that over there? Is it a giant clam? Yes, it is. Did you know that giant clams are the largest living bivalve mollusk in the world? I didn't. Thanks for sharing. I'm learning so much on this dive. That's what makes diving so great. You get to discover a whole new world below the surface. Look at those vibrant orange and pink corals. They look like giant flowers. Absolutely stunning. Did you know that some coral reefs are over 10,000 years old? 
no way, that's incredible. The underwater world is full of secrets and surprises. I couldn't agree more. I'm so happy to have you here exploring it with me. Welcome to our restaurant. Are you ready to order? Yes, I am. Could you recommend some of your specialty dishes? Of course. Our most popular dish is the Australian Wagyu beef with truffle butter. It's a must try. That sounds amazing. I'll take that, please. Great choice. What about a side dish? Our roasted vegetables are delicious. All right, I'll have the roasted vegetables as well. Excellent. Any other requests? Can I have a glass of your finest red wine to pair with the beef? Absolutely. Would you like a full glass or just a taste? Just a taste, please. Here you go. Let me know how you like it. MMM, that's a great wine. Thanks for the recommendation. My pleasure. Your dish will be ready shortly. I have to say, the presentation of the restaurant is just as impressive as the food. Thank you. We take pride in creating a cozy and luxurious atmosphere. That's definitely achieved. So, how long have you been a chef here? I've been cooking at this restaurant for five years now. Wow, you must really love what you do. Absolutely. I enjoy crafting unique and flavorful dishes for our guests. Well, I can assure you that the taste of this Wagyu beef speaks for itself. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Anything else I can get for you? Actually, I think I'll end this meal on a sweet note. What kind of desserts do you have? Our signature dessert is a chocolate lava cake with salted caramel ice cream. Would you like that? That sounds heavenly. Make it happen, please. Coming right up. Enjoy. I definitely will. Thank you so much for a wonderful dining experience. Hey B, have you ever thought about using natural language processing to generate news reports? Of course, hey. That's actually been a hot topic in the industry lately. I know, right? I was thinking about how it would save us so much time. Definitely. But we have to be careful not to sacrifice quality for efficiency. That's true. But imagine being able to generate reports in real time. It would certainly revolutionize the news industry. Yeah, and think of all the data we could gather and analyze. That's where your expertise in data science comes in, eh? Speaking of which, do you have any ideas for natural language processing models we could use? Well, there's always the classic bag of words approach. But that might not be accurate enough. True. We could also try using recurrent neural networks to predict the next word in a sentence. Sounds complex. It is, but it would allow us to generate more coherent sentences. Hmm, what about using topic modeling to generate news based on a specific topic? That's a great idea. We could use LDA or NMF to do that. And we could even use sentiment analysis to generate more emotional news articles. Yes. The possibilities are endless. I'm excited to see what we come up with. Me too, eh? Let's make some headlines. Hi there, B. How's the painting going today? Hey, eh? It's going all right, just struggling with getting the colors right. Ah uh, yes, color can be tricky. Have you tried mixing your paints to get the shade you want? Yeah, I have, but sometimes it just doesn't turn out the way I want it to. Well, don't worry too much about it. The beauty of art is that it doesn't have to be perfect. That's true, but I still want it to look good. Of course. Speaking of looking good, have you seen any interesting art exhibits or galleries lately? Actually, I went to a modern art museum last week and saw some pretty wild stuff. I couldn't even begin to understand what some of the pieces were supposed to mean. That's the beauty of modern art, isn't it? It's all open to interpretation. I guess so. But sometimes I just don't know where to start with it. Well, that's why it's always good to read up on the artist and their motivations behind their work. It can give you a better appreciation for it. That's a good point. Thanks for the advice, eh? Anytime, B. Keep up the good work on your painting. Hi there, how was your day today? Oh, it was very busy. But I'm glad it's over now. How about you? It was alright. Just trying to keep up with all the work. But I'm really looking forward to this meal now. This restaurant has amazing reviews. Yes, I've been here before actually. The food is definitely worth it. That's great to hear. I don't know what to order though. Do you have any recommendations? Well, I highly recommend the steak. It's cooked to perfection every time. Hmm, that does sound good. And what about the sides? The mashed potatoes are amazing. 
They're so creamy and flavorful. Okay, I'll go for that then. Thanks for the recommendation. No problem. And what about drinks? Would you like a beer or maybe a cocktail? Actually, I'll just stick to water for now. Gotta stay hydrated, you know? Haha, uh, yes, very responsible of you. I think I'll have a glass of wine though. It's been a long day. Sounds like a plan. So, what do you think of our new manager? Honestly, I think she's great. She's always so organized and efficient. Yeah, I agree. Plus, she's always willing to listen to our ideas and concerns. Exactly. And she's been doing a great job with keeping morale up during these challenging times. True. I'm really grateful to have her as our manager. Me too. And here's our food. Enjoy, boss. Thanks, let's dig in. Hello, I'm a travel writer and I'm excited to tour Kyoto's Kayamizu Temple today. Welcome to Kayamizu Temple. As your guide, I'm happy to share information about this historic site. Thank you. Can you tell me more about the temple's history and significance? Kayamizu Temple was founded in 780 CE and it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It's known for its wooden stage that offers a breathtaking view of Kyoto. That sounds incredible. This temple attracts a lot of visitors annually, doesn't it? Yes, it's a popular destination in Kyoto. In fact, the cherry blossom season and fall foliage, in particular, bring in a lot of tourists. That's fascinating. What else can you tell me about Kayamizu Temple? The temple is dedicated to the goddess Kanon, who is believed to offer mercy and compassion to her followers. It also houses a sacred waterfall where visitors can drink the water and have their wishes granted. Wow, I'm definitely going to try that. The architecture of the temple is also impressive. Can you tell me more about it? The temple's main hall was built using a traditional Japanese construction technique called no nails. It's impressive because it's made using only interlocking wooden pieces. Incredible. This temple really does have a lot to offer. I'm excited to write about it in my travel guidebook. We're always happy to have visitors appreciate and spread the word about Kaimizu Temple. Make sure to try some of the delicious local Japanese sweets too while you're here. Definitely. Thank you for the suggestion. You've been a great guide. It was my pleasure. I'm glad you enjoyed the tour. Hey there. I'm A, a front-end engineer. Nice to meet you, B, a web designer. Pleasure to meet you, A. So, let's talk about how we're going to design a modern business website. Absolutely. What's your vision for the aesthetics? I'm thinking minimalist with a touch of elegance. And I want to incorporate some cool animations for that extra flair. Sounds good. As for the functionality, what do you have in mind? Well, I want to make sure it's user-friendly and easy to navigate, but also showcases the company's services in a creative way. And I heard that you're the expert on making websites responsive. That's correct. I plan on using the latest technology to make sure the website is easy to use on all devices, from desktops to mobile phones. Great. And what about the color scheme? I recommend using a neutral base with pops of bold colors here and there for emphasis. It'll be inviting and engaging. Nice. What do you think about incorporating some custom illustrations? Definitely. It'll give the website a unique touch and make it stand out from competitors. Awesome, I've got some creative ideas for that. And what about the loading time of the website? It's always important to have fast loading time to avoid frustrating users. I'll optimize the code and images to make sure it loads quickly. Perfect. And we should also make sure to have a strong call to action to increase engagement. Absolutely, we can have a prominent button that redirects users to request a consultation or contact the company. Sounds good to me. And how about the font choices? I suggest using a sans serif font for easy readability, but feel free to experiment with different typography for headings and accents. Great, I have a font in mind that I think would look fantastic. Now, regarding multimedia elements, should we include videos? Videos can be a great way to showcase the company's services through testimonials or demos. I'll make sure they're optimized for a seamless viewing experience. Sounds good, and what about photos? High-quality photos that are relevant to the company's services can really enhance the visual appeal of the website. I can also optimize them for best performance. Perfect. This website is going to look amazing. Do you think we can finish this project by the end of the month? That's definitely possible. I'll work hard to optimize everything and make sure the website is functioning smoothly. Great, we make a great team. Thanks for your help, A. No problem at all. It was nice working with you, B.
Let's make this website a success. Hello, I couldn't help but notice that you're a fisherman. How's the fishing business going? Hi, it's going well. Thank you for asking. Although, it can be a bit tough with all the new regulations in place. Yes, I understand. We must protect the ocean's ecosystem and promote sustainable fishing practices to ensure a long-term future for both the fish and the fishermen. Absolutely right. It's important for us to understand the impact of our activities on the environment and take steps to minimize it. Exactly. And speaking of our impact on the environment, have you ever encountered any sea creatures that are particularly fascinating to you while out on the water? Yes, I've seen some pretty bizarre-looking creatures while fishing. Have you? Definitely. As a marine biologist, I'm always fascinated with the diversity of life under the sea. One of my favorite creatures is the octopus. They're incredibly intelligent and can even camouflage themselves to blend into their surroundings. Wow, that's amazing. It's always great to learn more about the ocean and the creatures living in it. Yes, indeed. In fact, we should work together to promote responsible fishing practices and raise awareness about the importance of protecting our oceans. I couldn't agree more. Let's spread the word and work towards a more sustainable future for our ocean and the people who depend on it. That's the spirit. The future is bright if we all do our part to take care of our planet's natural resources. Thanks for the chat and the inspiration to be more conscious about the environment. I'll make sure to spread the word and help you with your cause, too. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Good morning, B. How's your day going so far? It's going pretty well, A. Eh? Just finished baking our fresh batch of croissants. That sounds really tasty. Want to grab a coffee with me before we open up shop? Sure thing. I always love pairing my morning coffee with a nice croissant. Same here. So, did you hear about that new bakery that just opened up down the street? I did. But I'm not too worried. Our croissants and baguettes are the best in the city. That's definitely true. Plus, we are a great team. You make the bread and I make the coffee. You got that right. Speaking of which, any new coffee blends for this week? I actually just got in some Colombian beans that are supposed to be really good. Want to try them out? Definitely. Maybe we can even offer some samples to our customers. Great idea. And we could pair them with our fresh pain o chocolate. Oh man, my mouth is watering just thinking about it. Mine too. I think we're going to have a busy day ahead of us. No doubt about it. But with our delicious pastries and coffee, we'll both be smiling all the way to the bank. Haha, <laughs> you got that right. Let's get ready to open up shop and give our customers the best French experience they can get. Sounds like a plan, eh? Hey. Let's do it. Hey B, how's it going? I heard we're trying to optimize our network architecture to improve service availability. Hey, hey. Yeah, we've been experiencing some downtime lately and we want to make sure our customers have the best experience possible. Definitely. What kind of solutions have we looked at so far? Well, we're considering implementing load balancing and using multiple servers to handle traffic. It could potentially help distribute the load and avoid bottleneck situations. Sounds like a good idea. I wonder if we could also integrate a content delivery network as well? Great suggestion. That should help speed up page loading times for our users. Maybe we could also perform regular network performance testing to catch any potential issues before they arise? I couldn't agree more. It's important to proactively monitor our network to ensure it's always performing at its best. Have we thought about upgrading our hardware as well? More powerful servers could potentially handle heavier loads. Absolutely. It may require some additional investment initially, but it will be worth it in the long run. Is there anything else we could do to ensure our network is running smoothly? Well, I think we should also have a disaster recovery plan in place in case anything goes wrong. We want to avoid any potential data loss or downtime as much as possible. That's a good point. And speaking of disaster recovery, have you ever heard of the 3 to 1 rule? No, what's that? It's a data backup concept that suggests having three copies of data on two different media and one offsite. It could be something to consider in our disaster recovery plan. That's a smart idea. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Absolutely. Anyway, I think we're on the right track here. I'm excited to see the improvements we can make to our network. Same here. Let's get to work and make it happen. Good evening, B. What can I do for you tonight? Hi, A. I was hoping we could create a new cocktail for our menu. Something unique and flavorful. Absolutely. May I suggest using some local ingredients to give it that extra special touch? 
Sounds like a great idea. What would you recommend? Well, being in Foshan, we could use some kumquats and lychees to give it a fruity twist. I like the sound of that. What else could we add to make it stand out? How about some ginger and honey for a little kick and sweetness? That sounds perfect. Let's call it the Foshan Fizz. Great name. Let me mix up a batch for us to try. MMM, this is delicious. I can definitely see this becoming a customer favorite. I'm glad you like it, B. It's always fun to experiment and create something new. Yes, it keeps things fresh and exciting for our guests. Speaking of guests, do you have any events coming up that we could create special cocktails for? Actually, we have a wedding reception next month that could use some signature drinks. Wonderful. Let's get to work on some ideas and present them to the bride and groom. Sounds like a plan. Thanks for always being so creative and helpful, A. Eh? You're a great asset to our bar. Thank you, B. It's always a pleasure to collaborate with you. Cheers to the Foshan Fizz. Hey, what's up, buddy? It's good to see you here again. Hey. Good to see you too. I'm always excited to brainstorm with you. So, what's on the agenda today? Let's talk about ocean energy. It's an emerging field and there's a lot of potential for us to explore. I totally agree. The possibilities are endless. We could harness wave energy, tidal energy, or even ocean currents. That's true, and the best part is that the energy is renewable and very abundant. Speaking of abundance, have you heard of the floating wind farms they're building in Europe? They're doing some incredible things. Yes, I have. It's amazing how innovative they're getting with the technology. We should definitely think of doing something like that. Absolutely. It's time to start thinking outside the box and take advantage of the resources nature has to offer. We could also combine the ocean energy technology with other renewable sources like solar and wind. That's a great idea. We could create hybrid systems and make them more efficient. And the best part is that renewable energy is eco-friendly and doesn't harm the environment. Yeah, we definitely need to move in that direction. It's time for us to be the force that propels clean energy to the forefront. We've got big ideas and we'll need lots of collaboration and support to make it happen. Well, we've got each other and the sky's the limit. Let's get to work and make a positive impact. Hey there. Are you here on vacation? Yes, I am. I heard the fishing here is amazing, so I decided to give it a try. Well, you came to the right place. I'm A, and I've been fishing here for years. What kind of fish are you hoping to catch? Honestly, I have no idea. I just want a good fishing story to tell my friends back home. Well, we can definitely make that happen. Here, let me show you how to set up your line. Thanks. I've never been much of a fisherman, so I'm excited to learn. That's the spirit. You know, fishing is a lot like life, you never know what you're gonna get. That's a great way to look at it. Do you have any tips for me? Hmm, let's see. Always be patient, and don't be afraid to try different bait. Also, watch your line carefully, because you might miss a bite. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. So, how long have you been fishing here in Queensland? Oh, about 20 years or so. I used to come here with my dad when I was a kid, and I fell in love with it. That's really cool. I've never been fishing with my dad, but I wish I had. It's never too late to start. You can always take him fishing next time you see him. That's a great idea. I'll definitely do that. Hey, speaking of catching fish, have you ever caught anything really big? Oh, you bet. One time, I caught a giant barracuda that was at least six feet long. Took me hours to reel it in. Wow, that must have been quite a battle. I've never caught anything bigger than a trout. Well, you never know what this ocean has in store for you. That's the fun of fishing, there's always a chance for something unexpected. You're right, I like that. It's not just about catching the fish, it's the whole experience. Exactly. And hey, even if we don't catch anything today, we still get to enjoy this beautiful view. You're not wrong. This is a gorgeous spot. Thanks for introducing me to it. Anytime, my friend. And who knows, maybe we'll catch a whale shark next time. Good morning, B. How's everything going in the pastry kitchen today? Good morning, A. Everything is going well. We had a busy morning with all the prep work for today's high tea service. That's great to hear. I heard reservations for high tea have been increasing lately. What do you have on the menu today? We have a variety of delicate pastries like macarons, cream puffs, and mini tarts, along with freshly baked scones and finger sandwiches. Sounds delicious. 
One thing I always wonder about is how you come up with new pastry ideas. Where do you get your inspiration? I draw inspiration from many things, seasonal ingredients, fashion trends, and even everyday objects that catch my eye. Recently, I made a dessert inspired by a famous Shanghai landmark. Wow, that sounds innovative. Speaking of Shanghai landmarks, have you tried any local delicacies since you arrived here? Of course. I love the Xilong Bayo, steamed soup dumplings, and the Shangjiambo, pan-fried buns. They're simple yet tasty. Yes, those are must-tries. Have you ever considered incorporating local flavors into Western pastries? Absolutely. I've experimented with using green tea and red bean paste in pastries before, and they were a big hit with our guests. I'm always looking for ways to bring a unique twist to classic desserts. That's great to hear. Keep up the good work, B. Our guests love the beautiful and delicious pastries you create. Thank you, A. It's a pleasure working here at this beautiful hotel and being able to serve our guests with the best of both worlds, Western and local flavors. Hi there. How can I assist you today? Hi, I'm just checking out some second-hand items. Do you have anything interesting in your booth? Absolutely. We have some vintage cameras, a few pieces of jewelry, and some furniture as well. Oh wow, that sounds great. I've been meaning to add a camera to my collection. Would you mind showing me what you have? Sure thing. These cameras are real gems. Some of them still work like a charm. I love the look of this one. What do you think? That one's a classic. It takes amazing pictures. How does $50 sound? Hmm, that's a decent price. Do you think you can go any lower? I can do $45 if that works better for you. It's in great condition and comes with a case too. Sold. Do you take Venmo or PayPal? Either option is fine, whichever is more convenient for you. Great, I'll go ahead and send the payment. Thank you so much for your help. No problem at all, I'm happy to see it go to a good home. Enjoy the camera. Hey B, how's the testing going? It's going well so far, just a few bugs to squash. Great to hear that. What's the weirdest bug you've found? Well, it's not weird but it was funny. The software identified a photo of a cat as a human face. Haha, <laughs> that's hilarious. Did you try it with other animal photos? Yes, and it identified a dog as a car. Oh no, that's not useful at all. Well, at least it made us laugh. How's the coding coming along? It's going smoothly. I'm just dealing with a stubborn piece of code that doesn't want to cooperate. Ah, uh, those are always the worst. Anything you need help with? Actually, could you run a few test cases on this section? I want to make sure it's working properly. Sure thing, I'll prioritize it on my to-do list. Thanks, I appreciate it. By the way, have you tried that new sushi restaurant down the street? Not yet. Is it good? Amazing. We should definitely check it out one day. Sounds like a plan. Speaking of food, did you bring any snacks today? I'm feeling a bit peckish. I did. I have some homemade chocolate chip cookies. Help yourself. Yes. You are the best, eh? Haha, <laughs> glad to be of service. Let's get back to work. Good morning, sir. Welcome to Australia. May I see your passport and arrival card, please? Good morning. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you. So, what's the purpose of your visit to Australia? I'm here on a vacation. I plan to visit Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane. That sounds amazing. Do you have any goods to declare? No, I don't have anything to declare. Just my personal belongings. Okay, great. By the way, have you tried any Australian food before? Not yet, but I'm excited to try some. Do you have any recommendations? Sure, you should try our meat pies, Tim Tams, and Pavlova. They're all delicious. Thanks for the suggestions. I'll definitely give them a try. You're welcome. By the way, do you know any fun facts about Australia? Well, I know that Australia is the only country in the world that is also a continent. That's correct. But did you know that we have more than 10,000 beaches in Australia? Wow, that's amazing. I'll make sure to visit some of them while I'm here. You definitely should, sir. All right, everything looks good. Have a great time in Australia. Thank you. I will. Hey, have you heard about ISO 27001? Yeah, I've heard about it. Isn't it a security management system? Exactly. It's an information security management system that helps organizations keep their data safe. Wow, that sounds really interesting. 
So, what does the system do? Well, it sets out a framework for managing and protecting sensitive information, such as personal data or financial records. Oh, I see. So, is it like a lock and key for your digital files? You could say that. It's like a big virtual bodyguard that keeps your data safe and secure. Cool. So, if a company gets ISO 27001 certified, does that mean their data is 100% secure? Not necessarily, but it means they've implemented best practices to minimize the risks of security breaches. Got it. So, it's like a security blanket for their data? Yes, exactly. It's like putting your data to bed with a nice cozy blanket. Haha, <laughs> I like that analogy. So, why do you know so much about this system, eh? Hey. Oh, I work in the IT industry, so information security is really important to us. Plus, it's always good to learn new things. Well, thanks for sharing your knowledge with me. I feel more informed now. No problem, B. I'll always be here to talk about all things tech and security. Hey B, good morning. I'm sorry I'm a bit late, I had to grab my coffee first. No worries, A coffee is important, especially for programmers. We need all the energy we can get. So true. Speaking of programming, I was thinking. How can we protect our company's network system from hackers? Do you have any ideas? Absolutely. Since I'm a cybersecurity specialist, I have a ton of tips up my sleeve. First, we could implement multi-factor authentication for all users. Multi-factor authentication? Sounds fancy. Can you explain it in plain English? Sure thing. It's like a double lock on a door. You need something you know, like a password, and something you have, like a token or a fingerprint. It's much harder to crack than just using a password. Ah, uh, got it. That sounds pretty secure. What else can we do? We should also regularly update our software and systems. Hackers often exploit vulnerabilities that are left unpatched. Good point. And we should also train our employees on how to detect and avoid phishing attacks, right? Exactly. It's like teaching your grandma to spot a scam caller. It's important to keep everyone aware and informed. Haha, <laughs> that's a good one. All right, let's implement these measures and keep those pesky hackers at bay. You got it, eh? We'll be the network security superheroes of this company. Hey there. How's it going? Not bad, just trying to figure out how to handle all this data for our financial platform. Yeah, it can be a lot to handle. Have you considered any specific database systems? I was thinking of using MongoDB. What do you think? MongoDB is a great option for handling a large volume of data. Plus, it's very flexible and can handle unstructured data well. And what about security? How can we keep our data safe? We can use role-based access control and encryption to ensure our data is protected. That sounds good. Any other suggestions for optimizing the platform? We can also use indexing to improve the query performance and minimize network traffic. Makes sense. And how do we handle backups in case of any data loss? We can create automatic backups using a cloud-based backup solution such as Amazon Simple Storage Service, S3. Sounds like we're on the right track. How about user authentication and access control? We can use OAuth 2 for user authentication and access control lists, ACLs, for access control. Great. And how do we ensure data accuracy? We can implement data validation rules and use data profiling tools to ensure accuracy. Perfect. This is all great information. Thanks for your help. No problem, anytime. It's important that we build a solid, efficient, and secure financial platform. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 Asset Management? Yeah, I have. It's a standard for managing and protecting assets, right? That's right. It's a globally recognized standard that helps with information security. Interesting. Do you know how it can benefit a company? Sure thing. It helps to identify and minimize security risks and controls access to sensitive information. Wow, that sounds like a must-have for any company. Absolutely. It increases customer confidence and reduces the risk of security breaches. I definitely want my company to take advantage of this. Do you know if there are any downsides to it? Well, the implementation process can be complex and time-consuming, but it's worth it in the end. I see. Is it only for IT-related assets or can it be applied to all types of assets? It's actually applicable to all types of assets, not just IT-related ones. Great to know. 
How do you think ISO 27001 asset management compares to other standards? It's one of the most well-known and widely implemented standards for information security. Good to hear. How would a company go about getting certified in ISO 27001 asset management? They would need to comply with the standards requirements and undergo a certification audit from a third-party organization. Sounds like a rigorous process, but beneficial in the long run. Definitely. It's a worthwhile investment for any company looking to improve its security measures. Thanks for the info, A. I'll make sure to look more into it and recommend it to my company. Hey B, I was thinking about how we can optimize our product database structure. Do you have any ideas on this? Sure, I think we can start by identifying the most important and relevant data fields for each product category. That's a great point. We can then remove any redundant or irrelevant data to make the database more efficient. Exactly. And we can also create a separate table or database for product images and other multimedia files to avoid clutter and improve performance. Good idea. And speaking of performance, we should also consider using indexing and caching techniques to speed up data retrieval. Agreed. We can also use compression tools to reduce the size of the database and save disk space. That's smart. And since our e-commerce platform supports multiple languages, we should also make sure our database structure can handle multilingual data. Yes, we can use Unicode encoding to store different language characters and translate product information into different languages. Perfect. And in terms of scalability, we can prepare for future growth by using a flexible and modular database design. Great point. We can use techniques like sharding and partitioning to distribute data across multiple servers and ensure high availability. That's impressive. I'm glad we brainstormed these ideas. It's always fun to optimize databases. Absolutely, even if it's not the most glamorous task. But hey, it's important for the smooth operation of our e-commerce platform, right? Yes, we need to always keep the customer experience in mind, and that means having an efficient and well-organized database structure. Exactly. Let's get started on implementing these ideas and making our database rock solid. Hi, I'm excited to start my scuba diving lesson. Hi there, I'm glad you're excited. Have you done any diving before? Not really, just some swimming in the hotel pool. But I've always wanted to explore the Great Barrier Reef. Well, we'll start with the basics. Let's go over the safety procedures and the equipment you will be using. Sounds good. I hope I can remember everything. Don't worry, we'll go at your pace. Now, let's get you fitted with your wetsuit and fins. Wow, this wetsuit is snug. Do I look like a superhero now? Absolutely. You're ready to dive in and save the day. Just remember to breathe normally and equalize your ears as you descend. Got it. This is amazing. The colors and creatures down here are incredible. That's the beauty of scuba diving. It's a whole new world to discover. Let's practice some underwater skills now. All right, let's do this. Oh, no, I dropped my regulator. No worries, that's why we practice. Just recover it and replace it in your mouth. Thanks for your guidance. I feel more confident with each exercise we do. You are natural. On your last dive, we'll take some photos to remember the experience. Awesome. I hope the camera captures the beauty of the reef. Me too, and we'll end the day with some beachside barbecue to top off a perfect day of diving. That sounds like heaven. I can't wait for the amazing food and to relive the adventure in the photos. Hey there, great to see you again. Thanks for inviting me to watch this movie with you. No problem at all, I'm excited to hear your thoughts on it. Have you seen the trailer? Yes, I have. Looks like it's going to be a wild ride. Absolutely, the special effects are insane. I can't wait to see it on the big screen. Me too. So how have things been on your end? Are you working on any new projects? Yeah, actually. I'm currently in pre-production for a new thriller film. It's going to be intense. Sounds exciting. Any cast members confirmed yet? Not yet, but I have you in mind. Would you be interested in auditioning for the lead role? Of course. That would be amazing. When's the audition? I'll send you the details as soon as everything is finalized. Speaking of which, what have you been up to lately? I just finished filming a rom-com movie. It was a lot of fun. I played the lead actress. That's awesome. Congratulations. You always do a fantastic job on screen. Thank you, that means a lot coming from you. So, what's your favorite movie genre? I'm a big fan of sci-fi and fantasy films. The world-building and storytelling always capture my imagination. 
I can definitely see why. For me, it's definitely comedy. I love a good laugh. I completely understand. Comedies are great for lightening the mood. Speaking of which, the movie is about to start. Ready to enjoy the show? Absolutely. Let's grab some popcorn and settle in. Hi B, it's great to see you again. I think we have an exciting project to work on today. Yeah, definitely. I heard we're designing a travel booking website. That's right. The goal is to create a user-friendly platform that makes travel planning easy and seamless. I love traveling, so I'm excited to work on this project. Do we have any special features in mind? We want to make sure that the booking process is simple and straightforward. We should also consider incorporating user reviews and ratings since they can be helpful to potential travelers. That's a great idea. What about the design? Should we focus on color schemes, fonts, and layouts? Yes, the website's design should be visually appealing and easy on the eyes. We can also consider adding some images and videos to showcase popular travel destinations. Sounds like a plan. What about the user interface? How can we make it more intuitive? We should make sure that users can easily navigate the website and find what they need. We can also use tooltips and pop-ups to provide helpful information. Absolutely, we should also make it mobile-friendly so that users can book on the go. Good point. We should also optimize loading times and ensure that the website is responsive. This is going to be a fun project. I can't wait to see the end result. Me too. Let's get started and create a website that will make travel planning a breeze for everyone. Hello there, Captain. How's everything going with your fishing boat? Oh, it's been tough to maintain its condition lately. I'm glad you're here to help. Sure thing. What seems to be the problem? Well, there are a lot of rusty spots on the boat, and the engine doesn't seem to be running as smoothly as it used to. I see. Have you been doing regular maintenance checks? Honestly, not as often as we should. Well, that's probably part of the problem. It's important to stay on top of those checks to prevent bigger issues from developing. You're right. I'll make sure we do that from now on. Do you have any tips for preventing rust? Yes, regular washing and waxing can help. And make sure you're using the right type of paint for the boat's material. Got it. Thanks for the advice. And what about the engine? It could be a number of things, but one easy fix is to change the oil regularly. And if you notice any strange noises or smoke coming from the engine, it's best to get it checked out immediately. Okay, that makes sense. I'll make sure we're taking care of the engine too. Thanks for your help, eh? No problem, Captain. Happy to help keep your boat in shipshape. Hi there, I'm your diving instructor for today. Excited to explore the Great Barrier Reef? Hey, nice to meet you. Absolutely, I've been wanting to capture some beautiful shots of the reef. Well, you're in luck, because this area is brimming with incredible marine life. Are you a seasoned diver? Not really, my expertise is photography, but I'm confident in my swimming ability. No worries, safety is our number one priority. We'll go over everything you need to know before we dive in. Sounds good to me. Have you seen anything particularly interesting out here lately? Just yesterday, we spotted a massive green sea turtle. It was such a treat to see it in its natural habitat. Wow, that's amazing. I'm hoping to see some colorful fish or maybe even a shark. Oh yeah, we have plenty of those around here. But don't worry, they won't bother us as long as we don't provoke them. Don't worry, I won't be doing any poking around. Do you have any tips for taking good underwater photos? Definitely. Try to get as close as you can to your subject and play with the angles. The lighting down here can be tricky, so don't forget your flash. Thanks for the advice. I'm looking forward to capturing some beautiful shots. Great, let's gear up and get ready to dive in. Don't forget to take deep breaths and relax. Got it, I'm ready when you are. Let's go explore the wonders of the reef together. Hi there. Welcome to our shopping center. Can I help you with anything today? Hi, yes please. I'm here for the promotion, looking for some good deals. Absolutely. We have some great sales going on today. What are you interested in? I'm looking for some new clothes. Maybe some summer outfits? Perfect. Let me show you to our clothing section. We have a wide range of styles and sizes. What's your budget like? I'm on a bit of a budget, so nothing too pricey. No problem. We have some great options that won't break the bank. Take a look at these dresses. They're perfect for summer. Wow, those are really cute. 
Do you have them in my size? Let me just check. Yes. We have them in a small, medium, and large. Which size would you like to try on? I'll go with a medium. Great. The fitting rooms are just over there. Let me know if you need any assistance. Thanks, I appreciate it. I love this dress. How much is it? It's currently 30% off, so it's only $45. That's a great deal. I'll definitely take it. Awesome. Let me ring you up right here. Do you have a rewards card with us? No, I don't. No problem, I can sign you up for one right now. It's free, and you'll earn points for every purchase you make. Sure, that sounds like a good idea. All right, just fill out this form and you'll be all set. You'll get 10% off your purchase today, just for signing up. That's great. Thank you so much. My pleasure, enjoy your new dress. And don't forget to stop by again soon for more great deals. Have a great day. Thanks, I will. Hi there, I'd like to book a flight to Hawaii next month. Great. That's an amazing destination. What dates are you thinking? I was thinking about leaving the first week of June and staying for a week. Sounds perfect. Let's take a look at the available options. Do you have a preferred airline? Not really. Any suggestions? Well, how about Hawaiian Airlines? They offer great deals and have a fantastic reputation. Okay, that works for me. How much will it cost? It looks like it will cost around $600 round trip. Is that within your budget? Yes, that's reasonable. Can I choose my seats? Absolutely. You can choose your seats during the booking process. Is there anything else I can assist you with? Actually, do you have any recommendations for things to do in Hawaii? Yes, there's so much to do. I personally recommend visiting the Pearl Harbor Memorial and going on a snorkeling tour. Thank you for the suggestions. I can't wait for my trip. It was my pleasure helping you plan your trip. Have a fantastic time in Hawaii. Hi there, what can I offer you tonight? Would you like some amazing French cheese to pair with your wine? Sounds great. I love cheese, but I don't know much about the different types of French cheese. Can you give me some recommendations? Of course. Let's start with the classic brie cheese. It's soft, creamy, and goes well with red wine. You can also try the camembert cheese, it's slightly stronger and pairs well with white wine. Hmm, interesting. Can you tell me about some other types of cheese? Sure. We also have the Roquefort cheese, which is a blue cheese that's perfect with a sweet dessert wine. And there's the Kant cheese, which is nutty and goes well with a fruity red wine. Wow, I didn't know there were so many different French cheeses. What would you recommend if I like something that's easy to eat with crackers? For that, you can never go wrong with the crowd-pleasing chevre cheese. It's a delicious goat cheese that's tangy, creamy, and perfect for snacking. All of these sound amazing. Can you also recommend some red wines to go with the cheese? Absolutely. If you're having brie, try pairing it with a Pinot Noir as it will bring out the cheese's earthy flavor. And for Kant cheese, a Cabernet Sauvignon would be great as it has a full-bodied taste. I'm sold. I think I'll try the brie with a Pinot Noir tonight. Great choice. I promise you won't be disappointed. Enjoy your cheese and wine. Good morning, B. How's everything going? Good morning, A. It's been a busy morning so far. How about in the kitchen? Same here. We've had a lot of orders this morning. I noticed that we're running low on some ingredients. Could you make a list of what you need for restocking? Sure thing, B. I'll get that done right away. Thanks, A. By the way, how's your new dish coming along? It's going great. I made some tweaks to it and I think it's ready for the menu. Fantastic. What's in it? It's a Mediterranean-style chicken with roasted vegetables and a tomato-based sauce. Sounds delicious. I'll have to try it later. Definitely. And I was thinking that maybe we could do a prefix menu for Valentine's Day? That's a great idea, eh? We could have a three-course meal with some wine pairings. Exactly. I'll start drafting up some menu ideas. Awesome. Also, we've been getting some great reviews online lately. That's amazing to hear, B. I'm glad we're making our customers happy. Me too, A. Keep up the great work. Hey B, what's up? Hey A, not much. Just thinking about how we can improve our self-driving cars. Yeah? What do you have in mind? Well, I was thinking about integrating machine learning into our systems. Interesting. How could that help? 
By continuously learning from new data, we can improve the accuracy of our models and make better predictions. Ah, uh, gotcha. So, what kind of data are you thinking of using? We could use sensor data from the cars, as well as outside sources like weather and traffic data. Okay, that makes sense. But how do we ensure the data is accurate and reliable? We can implement processes to clean and pre-process the data before feeding it into the models. Right. And what kind of models do you think we should use? I think we should start with some simple regression models and then gradually move on to more complex models like neural networks. Sounds like a plan. But what happens when the system encounters something completely new? That's where deep learning models can really shine. They can learn and adapt to new situations and data on their own. Wow, that's pretty cool. But what about concerns around safety and reliability with using machine learning? We can implement rigorous testing and validation procedures to ensure the system is safe and reliable. Makes sense. So, how long do you think it'll take before we can integrate these changes into our self-driving cars? I think with the right team and resources, we could have a working prototype in about six months. That's ambitious, but I like it. Let's get started. Good morning, B. How are you doing today? Good morning, A. I'm doing well, thanks for asking. I'm excited to discuss our design project today. That's great to hear. So, what kind of design are we looking at here? I'm looking to create a logo for my new business. I want it to be modern and eye-catching. Sure, we can definitely do that. What's your business about? It's a coffee shop that specializes in organic and fair trade coffee. I want the logo to reflect our commitment to sustainability. I understand your vision. How about we incorporate natural elements like leaves or coffee beans into the design? That sounds perfect. Also, can we make sure the color scheme is earthy and welcoming? Of course, we'll make it warm and inviting. By the way, have you thought about a slogan for your coffee shop? Not yet. Any ideas? How about taste the difference, choose sustainability? That's amazing. I love it. Let's add that to the branding package. All right, it's settled. We'll get to work on the logo design and slogan creation. Is there anything else you'd like to add? No, that's all for now. Thank you so much for your help, A. You're welcome, B. It's always a pleasure working with you. We'll be in touch soon with the final designs. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Goodbye. Hey B, have you ever heard of ISO 27001 Disaster Recovery? Oh yeah, I've heard of it. It's a framework for the management of information security and disaster recovery. Exactly. I'm thinking of implementing it at our company. What do you think? That's a great idea. It's important to have a solid plan in case of a disaster. I totally agree. I don't want to be caught off guard if something unexpected happens. So, what kind of disasters should we be preparing for? Hmm, well there's natural disasters like earthquakes and floods, but we also need to consider cyber attacks and system failures. That's true. We need to cover all of our bases. Have you ever been through a disaster recovery process before? Yes, I have. It's tedious, but it's worth it in the end. You need to be prepared for the worst. I've never gone through it, but I have a feeling it's going to be a lot of work. Definitely. It's important to have the right team in place and a solid plan of action. I'm thinking of putting together a team of experts to help us out. That's a smart move. You don't want to leave anything to chance. Exactly. It's better to be safe than sorry. So, when are you planning on implementing this? I'd like to start as soon as possible. The longer we wait, the more vulnerable we become. I agree. Let's get started on this ASAP. Great. I'll start putting together a plan and assembling a team. Thanks for your input, B. No problem. I'm always here to help. Hi, B. It's great to meet with you today to discuss the role of AI in personalized education. Yes, I'm excited to talk about it. So tell me, what kind of problems are you trying to solve with AI? Well, we want to create an individualized learning experience that caters to each student's needs and interests. But with so many different variables, it's hard to know where to start. I understand. Fortunately, AI can help by analyzing data to identify patterns and predictions that can guide us in creating highly personalized lesson plans. That makes sense. But is there a risk of over-reliance on machine-generated content? Absolutely. AI should be a tool, not a replacement for human instructors. It's important to maintain the human element, such as allowing for teacher input and feedback, to keep students engaged and motivated. 
That's a great point. I also worry about ensuring that each student's data is kept secure and private. Definitely. We must adhere to ethical data practices and regulations to maintain trust with our users. Proper data protection and security measures are essential. Right. And in terms of implementation, how do we ensure that the technology is accessible to all students, especially those with limited access to technology? That's a critical concern. It may require increased investment in technology infrastructure and offering alternative, low-tech forms of content for students who may not have access to devices. I see your point, B. With all these considerations, it sounds like we have our work cut out for us, but I'm excited to see the possibilities that AI can bring to the table. Yes, me too. With AI, we can create learning experiences tailored to each student's strengths and weaknesses, thus fostering a more inclusive and effective educational landscape. It's great to have your perspective, B. Thanks for this enlightening discussion. I'm sure we will use this information to usher in new innovations in personalized learning. Hey, have you heard about the new system testing plan? No, I haven't. What's it about? It's a new approach to testing our systems, and it's supposed to be more efficient. That sounds interesting. Have they started implementing it yet? Not yet, but they're planning to start soon. They're currently working on developing the testing cases. Ah, uh, I see. So what are the different types of testing cases? There are functional, performance, and regression testing cases. And how do they determine which testing cases to use? They base it on the system requirements and determine which cases are necessary to test those requirements. Got it. How do we ensure that everything is covered in the testing cases? We have to make sure that the testing cases are comprehensive and cover all possible scenarios. Makes sense. How do we keep track of the testing progress? We use a test management tool to track the progress and make sure everything is on schedule. That's good to know. How often do we need to reevaluate the testing cases? We usually reevaluate them after each testing cycle to see if any updates or changes need to be made. Sounds like a lot of work, but it's important for ensuring quality systems. Thanks for explaining it to me. No problem. It's always good to stay updated on our testing processes. Hey there. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. What brings you here? Well, as a network engineer, I'm always concerned about network security. I was hoping to get your input on how we can better protect our network against online attacks. Sure thing. As a cybersecurity specialist, I'm always looking for ways to fortify systems against threats. That's great to hear. Maybe you can tell me about some common tactics that you've seen hackers use? Well, one common tactic is phishing emails. Hackers will send emails that appear to be from legitimate sources, but they contain links that direct users to fake websites that steal their login credentials. It's important to educate our employees about these types of scams. Yeah, I agree. Another tactic I've seen is a distributed denial of service attack, which floods our network with traffic until it crashes. What can we do to prevent that? One thing we can do is implement firewalls and intrusion detection software. We can also limit the amount of traffic coming into our network from outside sources. Makes sense. How about malware? Have you seen that used often? Absolutely. Malware is a big problem because it can give hackers remote access to our systems. It's important that we keep our antivirus software updated and that we scan our systems regularly. Great advice. Thanks. Any final thoughts? Just remember that it's important to stay vigilant and to always be looking for ways to improve our security protocols. Thanks for your help. I feel more confident that our network will be safe against online threats. Glad I could assist. Let's continue to work together to keep our network secure. Good morning, B. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling a little nervous. I've never been to the hospital before. Don't worry, B. We're just going to do a routine checkup today. Is there anything specific that's bothering you? Well, my stomach has been hurting a bit lately. Okay, we'll take a closer look at that. Have you been eating anything spicy or greasy recently? Yeah, I was on a hot sauce kick for a while there. Ah, uh, that could be the cause of your stomach pains. But we'll run some tests, just to be sure. Thank you, Nurse A. You're very reassuring. No problem, B. I'm here to make sure you're well taken care of. Now, let's check your blood pressure and listen to your heart and lungs. Okay, sounds good. Your blood pressure is normal, and your heart and lungs sound great. Now, let's have a look at your stomach. Slightly nervous. Don't worry, B. I'll be gentle. Lifts shirt and starts examining stomach, hmm, it does feel a little tender here. 
I'm going to recommend some over-the-counter medication for you, and we'll follow up in a few days to see how you're doing. Thank you, Nurse A. You're so kind and patient. It's my pleasure, B. It's important to me that my patients feel comfortable and well taken care of. Do you have any other concerns or questions? No, I think that's all. Thank you for explaining everything to me. You're welcome, B. Have a good day and take care of yourself. You too, Nurse A. Thank you for being such a helpful assistant. Hi there, I'm the Noodle Master. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm the Milk Tea Mixologist. Great to meet you too. So, what's your specialty when it comes to milk tea? I enjoy creating new flavors and trying out unusual combinations. What's your specialty noodle dish? I make an amazing Dan Dan noodle dish with homemade Sichuan style sauce. It's a perfect blend of spicy and savory. Wow, that sounds delicious. Have you ever thought of pairing it with a milk tea? Actually, I haven't. What kind of milk tea would you recommend? Maybe a jasmine green tea to balance out the spiciness or a brown sugar milk tea to complement the flavors. What do you think? Those sound like great recommendations. I'll have to try them out. Definitely. And if you'd like, I can whip up a specialty milk tea for you to try with your Dan Dan noodles. That would be excellent. I'll be sure to recommend it to my customers. And I'll make sure to tell my milk tea fans about your delicious noodles. Sounds like a perfect partnership to me. It sure does. And who knows, maybe we'll even collaborate on a special dish someday. That would be awesome. I can already taste the possibilities. Me too. Let's keep in touch and make it happen. Definitely. It was great meeting you. Same here. Cheers to good food and good company. Hey there, how's it going? Pretty good, just trying to make sense of all this market data. It's overwhelming. Tell me about it. But it's our job to make sense of this stuff. So, where do we start? Well, I was thinking of using machine learning algorithms to find patterns in the data. Good idea. Have you considered using regression analysis to determine which variables have the most impact on sales? Yes, I have. In fact, I've already started running some regressions on the data. It's looking promising so far. That's excellent. Have you also looked at clustering analysis to group our customers based on their preferences and buying behavior? Actually, I haven't gotten to that yet. Do you think it's necessary? It could be. Understanding our customer segments can help us tailor our marketing efforts to their specific needs. I see your point. And what about text analysis? We get a lot of feedback from our customers on social media. We could use that to improve our products and services. Yes, that's a great idea. We can use natural language processing techniques to extract insights from social media data. It's amazing how much information we can get from data these days. It's like a gold mine waiting to be tapped. Absolutely. But we need to be careful not to fall into the trap of data overload. We need to focus on the key metrics that matter most to our business. True. And we also need to make sure our data is reliable and relevant. Garbage in, garbage out, as they say. Exactly. That's why it's important to have a solid data management strategy in place. We need to ensure data quality, security, and accessibility. You're right. And I think we also need to work on our data visualization skills. We need to be able to present our findings in a clear and compelling way. Yes, that's crucial. We can use tools like Tableau or Power BI to create interactive dashboards and reports that tell a story. I couldn't agree more. With the right data strategy and tools, we can take our business to the next level. It's exciting to think about the possibilities, isn't it? Absolutely. Thanks for your help, eh? Hey. I'm feeling more confident and inspired already. Hey, how's it going behind the bar, B? It's going pretty well, Chef A. I'm just mixing up some unique cocktails to go with your delicious dishes. That's great to hear. I'm excited to see what you've come up with. I thought I'd try something different with this dish, so I've made a cocktail with a smoky flavor to complement the dish's spices. Interesting. What's in it? It's a mix of tequila, mezcal, and a touch of agave syrup with a spritz of chili oil on top for that smoky kick. Sounds amazing. I'll make sure to recommend it to our guests. And what about your dish, Chef A? I've decided to play with some Asian flavors and created a dish of grilled sea base with a miso glaze and a side of kimchi fried rice. Yum. I have just a cocktail to go with it, a mix of sake, yuzu juice, and a little ginger syrup. Perfect. We make a great team, B. Agreed. 
It's all about making sure our guests have a memorable experience. That's right. And with our unique dishes and creative cocktails, I'm sure they will. Cheers to that. Hey, did you hear about the recent cheating scandal during that certification exam? Yeah, I did. It's really disappointing to hear about people taking shortcuts. I know, right? It's not fair for those who actually put in the effort to study and pass the exam. Absolutely. Cheating only discredits the integrity of the certification and those who hold it. Do you think the exam was too difficult and that's why people resorted to cheating? I don't think so. The purpose of the exam is to test one's knowledge in the subject matter, and if it's too easy, it doesn't hold any value. That's a good point. But what about those who try to justify their cheating by saying that everyone else was doing it? That's just a poor excuse. One should never compromise their values and integrity for the sake of conformity. Agreed. So what do you think should happen to those who were caught cheating? They should face the consequences, whether it's being banned from taking the exam again or facing legal action. It's important for those who cheat to understand that there are serious repercussions for their actions. Definitely. Cheating not only hurts themselves, but also undermines the credibility of the certification for everyone. Well said. Let's hope that this incident serves as a wake-up call for those who are considering cheating in the future. Absolutely. Always remember that hard work and dedication are the keys to success, and shortcuts only lead to temporary gains. Good afternoon, B. How are you? Hi, Teacher A. I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I'm great, thanks for asking. So, how's your language learning been going? It's been good so far, but I feel like I could be more efficient in my studying. That's understandable. What study strategies have you been using? I've been trying to read more books in English and also watching TV shows and movies with subtitles. Those are great strategies, but have you considered practicing speaking and writing more frequently? Actually, I haven't been doing that as much. Do you have any suggestions? One thing you can try is finding a language partner to practice with or keeping a journal to practice writing. Those sound like good ideas. I'll definitely give them a try. Great. Another thing is to focus on learning vocabulary related to your interests and daily life. That's a good point. I'll start making flashcards with the vocabulary I encounter. Perfect. Lastly, remember to stay motivated and consistent in your efforts. That's the key to success in language learning. Thank you for the advice, Teacher A. I will keep that in mind. You're welcome, B. Keep up the good work. Hi, B. How's the experiment going? It's going pretty well, but I have to admit I'm a little nervous about the results. That's understandable, but remember, in science, even unexpected or negative results are still valuable. True, but we do want to see if our hypothesis is correct. Of course. Speaking of hypotheses, have you read that new study that challenges the theory of gravity? Wait, what? How can they challenge something that's been proven for centuries? I know, it sounds crazy, but they claim to have found evidence of a fifth force of nature. Wow, that's mind-blowing. Do you think it's true? Well, I'm always skeptical of new claims, but it's definitely intriguing. Let's see what the scientific community thinks once it undergoes peer review. Agreed. By the way, have you seen the latest hilarious lab meme that's been circulating online? No, but I could use a good laugh. Show me. Show's meme on phone, it's so funny because it's so true. Laughs, that's hilarious. I'm definitely sharing that with my colleagues. Yeah, we can all use a little humor to break up the monotony of lab work. Speaking of which, have you noticed how much coffee we go through in a day? Laughs, yes, it's like we're fueling our experiments with caffeine instead of actual chemicals. Hey, whatever works, right? But maybe we should invest in a bigger coffee maker. Smiling, absolutely. We can't risk running out of coffee during the next big breakthrough. Laughs, agreed. It's the most important ingredient in our experiments. Hi there. My name is A, and I'm excited to go diving in the Great Barrier Reef. Nice to meet you, A. I'm your instructor, B. Are you ready for your first diving lesson? Yes, I am. I've been dreaming about this for a long time. What should I do first? First, we'll go over some basic skills on the surface. Then we'll dive under and practice those skills underwater. Sounds great. I'm nervous, but also excited. Don't worry, we'll start with some simple skills like clearing your mask and regulator. Have you done this before? No, I haven't. But I've watched a lot of YouTube videos, so I think I have a good idea. Haha, <laughs> well watching videos is a start. But let's make sure you can do it for real. 
Okay, let's start with clearing your mask. Take a deep breath and let's go. Clear's mask, wow, that wasn't too bad. Great job. Now let's move on to clearing your regulator. Clear's regulator, piece of cake. I think I'm ready to dive. Okay, let's gear up and head underwater. Remember to equalize your ears as we descend. Got it. Descends, whoa, this is amazing. Look at all the fish. Yes, the Great Barrier Reef is truly a wonder of the world. Remember to use slow, deep breaths and stay relaxed. Breathes deeply, this is so peaceful. I feel like I'm in a whole new world. Yes, diving can be a transformative experience. Just keep focusing on your breathing and the beauty around you. Thank you so much for guiding me through this, B. I can't wait to explore more of the Great Barrier Reef. It was my pleasure, A. Remember to always dive safely and responsibly and respect the amazing marine life around us. Good morning, B. How are you doing today? Good morning, A. I'm doing great, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing pretty good too, thanks. So, let's start the meeting. I believe we have a lot to discuss today. Absolutely, I've prepared some reports and ideas for our upcoming project. I think you'll find them quite interesting. That's great to hear. Before we begin, can I offer you some coffee or tea? Yes, please. I could definitely use a cup of coffee to kickstart my day. All right, I'll ask our assistant to bring us a fresh cup of coffee. So, tell me what do you think about our recent marketing campaign? I think it was pretty successful. We had a good turnout and received positive feedback. However, I think we can improve some aspects of it. Interesting. Can you give me some examples of what we can improve? Well, we could increase our social media engagement and target a wider audience. We could also offer some additional incentives to our customers. Those are some great ideas. Let's incorporate them into our next campaign. By the way, I heard you went on a vacation to Europe last month. How was it? Yes, it was amazing. I visited several countries and had a great time. The food, architecture, and culture were all so inspiring. That sounds fantastic. I hope you took some pictures so we can all see them later. Of course, I'll be happy to share them. Anyway, back to the meeting. I have a proposal for a new project that I think will benefit our company. Sounds intriguing. Tell me more about it. Well, I believe we should focus more on developing our online presence and creating an e-learning platform. This will not only help us reach a wider audience but also provide a valuable resource for our customers. That's an excellent idea. Let's explore this further and discuss the feasibility of it. I think we should wrap up the meeting for now. We've covered a lot of ground today. Yes, definitely. Thank you for your time, A. No problem. Thank you for your input, B. Let's reconvene next week to follow up on the progress made. And don't forget to send me those vacation pictures. Have a great day. Good morning, B. How are you doing? Good morning, A. I'm doing great, thank you. How about you? I'm doing well, thank you. So, what do we have in store for today's scene? Today we're shooting the scene where you rescue the love interest from the villain's clutches. Ah, uh, the classic damsel in distress scenario. I've always wanted to do a scene like this. I'm glad you're excited about it. We've got some awesome stunt doubles for the fight sequence. That sounds incredible. I can't wait to see it all come together. We've also got some great special effects planned for when you fly in to save the day. Fly in? That's even better. You never cease to amaze me, B. It's all in a day's work. Now, let's get started. The crew is waiting for us. Right. Just one thing, can I get some coffee first? I need to wake up a bit more. Of course, we can't have our leading lady falling asleep on the job. I'll ask the assistant director to bring some over. You're the best, B. Let's make a movie. Hey B, have you met the famous film director A? He's on set today. No way, really? I've heard a lot about him. Yeah, he's directed some of the biggest box office hits in recent years. That's amazing. I can't believe I'm working with him. So, how's your experience been so far with the shoot? It's been great, thanks for asking. The crew is professional and the set design is impressive. That's good to hear. I'm sure with A's direction, this film is going to be a masterpiece. I've seen him walking around with the script, making notes here and there. He's so focused. It's not surprising, really. A is known for his meticulous attention to detail. I'm just grateful for the opportunity to work with him. It's a dream come true. And it's not every day we get to shoot in Melbourne. This city has so much to offer. 
Yeah, I've been enjoying the local cuisine and exploring the night scene after filming. That's great to hear. Melbourne is a vibrant city with plenty of entertainment options. Definitely. Hey, hey, do you think we could ask for a group photo after shooting? I don't see why not. I'm sure he won't mind a quick snap for the gram. Laughs, thanks, hey. That'd be awesome. No problem, guys. Let's just make sure we've wrapped up filming for the day before we ask him for a photo. Sounds like a plan. I'm excited to see how this film turns out. Me too, B. It's gonna be great. Good morning. Welcome to Sydney's International Airport. How can I assist you? Hi, good morning. I have a business trip to attend here in Sydney. Can you help me with some arrangements? Of course. Business trip, that sounds exciting. When is your trip scheduled? I arrived here today, and my meeting is in two days. I also have some free time after that. Great. Do you have a preferred location to stay? Well, I was thinking of something close to the venue of my meeting. I heard about Circular Quay. Would that be a convenient location? Yes, it is a great location. It is just a few minutes' walk from the venue. How about some activities for your free time? I love museums, and I also want to see some of the famous landmarks here in Sydney. You can visit the Sydney Opera House, the Harbour Bridge, and the Art Gallery of New South Wales. Do you need transportation? Yes, please. What can you suggest? You can hire a car or a veil of the public transportation, like the train or bus. We can also arrange for a private car, just let us know. Thank you very much for your help. I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Enjoy your stay here and have a successful business meeting. Good morning, Director B. How are you feeling today? Hey, hey. I'm feeling great, thanks. How about you? I'm feeling pumped for today's shoot. My character gets to do some pretty cool stunts. That's great to hear. Let's make sure we capture those stunts perfectly on camera. Speaking of cameras, have you seen the latest viral video of that cat playing the keyboard? Haha. -ha. Yes, I actually did see it. Do you have any pets yourself? Yes, I have a rescue dog named Max. He's a total goofball, but I love him. Ah, that's so sweet. My wife has been begging me to get a dog for ages. You definitely should. They bring so much joy to our lives. I'll consider it. So, are you ready to rehearse our scene? Let's do it. But first, do you want to hear about the strange dream I had last night? Of course. You always have the craziest dreams. I dreamt that I was a superhero, flying through the city and saving people from dangerous situations. Wow, that sounds like an awesome dream. Maybe we should write a movie about it. Huh. That would be amazing. Maybe you can direct it and I can star in it. Count me in. Now, let's get back to business and make some movie magic. Hi B, how's it going? I heard you were in charge of dealing with DDoS attacks at our company. Yeah, that's right. It's been keeping me pretty busy lately. What's up? Well, I was wondering if you had any tips or tricks for dealing with these types of attacks. Any secret weapons up your sleeve? Ha uh, I wish. Unfortunately, there's no secret formula for dealing with DDoS attacks. It's all about being proactive and having a solid plan in place. That makes sense. So, what kind of plan do you usually follow? First, we make sure our traffic monitoring tools are up to date and are able to detect unusual traffic patterns. We also have a plan for quickly filtering or blocking traffic coming from the attacking IP addresses. That's interesting. Have you ever dealt with any particularly challenging attacks? Yeah, definitely. Sometimes, attackers will use botnets or other distributed methods to make the attack harder to pinpoint. In those cases, it takes a bit more effort to track the source and block the traffic. Wow, that sounds like a real headache. How do you manage to stay calm and focused during these situations? Well, it's definitely a challenge. But, it helps to remember that we're all working together to protect our network and our customers. Plus, a good sense of humor never hurts. Huh. I like your attitude. Speaking of humor, have you ever heard any funny stories or jokes related to DDoS attacks? Actually, I have. One time, a friend of mine joked that a DDoS attack was like being stuck in traffic, you're frustrated, going nowhere fast, and surrounded by a bunch of angry people. Haha, <laughs> that's great. Thanks for sharing. It's important to remember to keep a positive outlook, especially during stressful situations like these. Definitely. And remember, if all else fails, just turn off your computer and take a break. There's always tomorrow. Sound advice. 
Thanks for your time, B. Keep up the great work. No problem, A. Happy to help, anytime. Hi there, I'm a software engineer. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm a robotic engineer. Pleasure to meet you too. So, how can we use robotic technology to improve our manufacturing process? Well, there are a lot of ways. We could use robots to automate repetitive tasks like packaging and assembly. That would definitely boost our productivity. What about quality control? Yes, robots can be programmed to inspect products for defects and ensure they meet quality standards. That's great. We could save so much time and money with robotic technology. Absolutely. It's amazing how much robots have advanced in recent years. I just hope they won't take over the world one day. Ha uh, don't worry. We're still a long way from that. Well, I'm excited to see what we can do with these robots. Should we get started on implementing them? Definitely. Let's work together to make our manufacturing process more efficient and effective than ever before. Hi there. I'm excited to talk about technology and education with you today. Hi, likewise. As a teacher, I feel that incorporating technology in the classroom is essential in this digital age. Yes, definitely. Technology has the potential to enhance and personalize the learning experience of students. That's right. What do you think are some effective tools to use in the classroom? Well, there are so many options out there, from interactive whiteboards to educational apps. It really depends on the specific needs and goals of the teacher and their students. I completely agree. It's important to consider the age and level of our students when choosing technology tools. Yes, exactly. And when properly integrated, technology can also help improve communication and collaboration among students. Absolutely. It's exciting to see how far technology has come and how it can be used to enhance education in many aspects. Yes, it's amazing how much technology has transformed our lives. And with the ever-evolving landscape of technology, the possibilities for education are endless. That's true. As an educator, I'm eager to continue exploring and integrating technology in my classroom. It's great to hear that. And as a technology expert, I'm always happy to assist and provide guidance. Thank you. It's definitely important to have support and resources to effectively implement technology in education. You're welcome. I think it's best to approach technology as a tool to enhance and enrich the learning experience, rather than as a replacement for traditional teaching methods. Yes, that's a great point. Technology is not a solution to everything and should be used strategically in conjunction with other teaching methods. Precisely. With thoughtful planning and implementation, technology can truly amplify and accelerate the learning experience for our students. I couldn't agree more. Thanks for the insightful conversation, A. It's been a pleasure discussing education and technology with you. Likewise, B. Thank you for having this conversation with me. Hey B, have you ever thought about creating a game that offers a unique and immersive experience? Definitely. That's every game designer's dream, isn't it? Yeah. So, what do you think we need to make it happen? Well, first, we need a captivating storyline that can hook the players right from the beginning. That's a good point. But I think we also need stunning graphics and sound design to make it more engaging. Absolutely. And we can't forget about gameplay mechanics. It should be challenging yet not frustrating. Yes. Maybe we can add some puzzles and mini-games to keep players thinking and interested. Great idea. It'll also break up the monotony of playing the same game all the time. Exactly. We also need to ensure the game is user-friendly and easy to navigate, especially for new players. Agreed. We don't want players to lose interest because they can't figure out how to play the game easily. Yeah. It's also important to allow player customization, such as character design and abilities. True. Customization enhances players' game experience, and it also keeps the game fresh and exciting. And let's not forget about multiplayer. Players love to compete with their friends, so we need to include that. Yes, but we also need the option for solo play, because not everyone wants to play with others. Of course. We need to cater to all types of players. And what about microtransactions? We can offer cosmetic items or extra features as in-app purchases, but it shouldn't be necessary to play the game. Good point. We want players to feel like they can play without spending a lot of money. Exactly. We also need to keep the game updated with new content, like new levels or challenges, to keep players interested. Definitely. We want the players to keep coming back for more. So, what do you think about getting started with the game's development? I'm excited. 
Let's do this. Great. Let's make a game that we can all be proud of. Hey, B, did you hear about the new coffee blend we're introducing today? No, I haven't. What's it like? It's a mix of Ethiopian and Colombian coffee beans with a hint of cocoa. It's perfect for anyone with a sweet tooth. Wow, that sounds amazing. I'll definitely try it out later. Speaking of sweets, have you tried our fresh banana bread? Yes, I have. It's one of my favorites. Same here. I love how moist and flavorful it is. Absolutely. And our customers seem to love it too. We sell out every day. That's no surprise. We're lucky to work in such a busy cafe. Agreed. It's always a challenge, but it keeps things interesting. Definitely. Plus, it's a great opportunity to meet new people. Right. Speaking of, have you seen that regular customer who always orders a triple shot espresso with whipped cream? Haha, <laughs> yes. That's quite the order. I know, I don't know how he manages to drink it all. Well, everyone has their own preferences. That's true. And as baristas, it's our job to make sure everyone gets their perfect cup of coffee. Exactly. So let's go make some delicious drinks for our customers. Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Hi there. I'm the food photographer for this shoot. Nice to meet you. Definitely. The dishes look amazing. I'm already excited to start taking some pictures. Yes, please. I can take pictures while you cook so that we can get some action shots as well. Is that okay? That sounds perfect. I'll get my camera ready while you work your magic. Oh my goodness, this is delicious. I don't know how you do it, but it's amazing. Let me take some close-ups of the sauce and the grill marks on the meat. Wow, every dish looks like a masterpiece. The colors, the presentation, everything is so beautiful. I think we have plenty of photos for the client to choose from. I couldn't think of a better way to end the day. Thanks for the offer, chef. You truly know how to make some mouth-watering dishes. Good evening, welcome to our restaurant. May I start by recommending our special dish of the day? Sure, I'm always up for trying new things. What do you suggest? We have a seared salmon with a mango salsa that has been very popular with our customers. It's light and refreshing, perfect for this warm summer evening. That sounds lovely, I'll give it a try. And perhaps a glass of your finest white wine to go with it? Of course, we have a great selection of wines that would complement the dish perfectly. Is there anything else I can get for you this evening? Actually, I'm in the mood for something sweet after dinner. Can you recommend a dessert? Absolutely, our tiramisu is made fresh in-house and is definitely a crowd-pleaser. But if you prefer something with fruit, our mixed berry tart is fantastic as well. Hmm, tough choice. I'll go with the tiramisu tonight, please. Excellent choice. Is there anything else you need or any dietary restrictions we should be aware of? No, I'm good for now. But I must say, the decor in here is stunning. Did you design it yourself? Thank you for noticing, but no, I cannot take credit for that. Our interior designer did an amazing job with the ambience in here. We want our customers to feel just as wowed by the atmosphere as they are by the food. Well, you've definitely succeeded. This is a perfect spot for a date night or a special occasion. Yes, we love to be part of our patrons' special moments. It's an honor to be a part of creating memories that will be cherished forever. It certainly shows. Well, I can't wait to try the dish and experience everything this restaurant has to offer. We're looking forward to it. Let us know if you need anything else, and please enjoy your meal. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Asakusa Canon Temple. My name is A, and I will be your tour bus driver today. Hello, everyone. My name is B, and I'll be your tour guide. Asakusa Canon Temple is an important temple in Tokyo, and it has a rich history and cultural significance. That's right, B. The temple was founded in the 7th century and has been a major pilgrimage site for Buddhists ever since. It's also one of the oldest temples in Tokyo, and it's known for its iconic five-story pagoda and the beautiful view of the Tokyo Skytree. Yes, and you can also try some traditional Japanese street food in the surrounding area. I recommend trying some matcha-flavored ice cream or trying some grilled skewers. And don't forget to visit the nearby Nakamai Shopping Street. It's a great place to buy souvenirs and experience Tokyo's traditional shopping culture. But be careful not to overspend because we still have other stops on our itinerary. Right, we still have a lot to see today. After this, we're off to visit the Imperial Palace and then to Ginza for some high-end shopping. Don't worry, folks. 
we have a comfortable and air-conditioned bus to take us around, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the sights of Tokyo. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me or A. We're here to make your Tokyo sightseeing experience memorable and enjoyable. That's right. Now let's head off to explore Asakusa Canon Temple and all it has to offer. Hey there, welcome to Darwin. Are you enjoying your stay so far? Yes, I am. There's so much to explore here. Oh yeah, Darwin is full of hidden gems. Have you had a chance to try some of our local cuisine? Not yet, but I'm excited to try some of it out. What do you suggest? Well, you can't come to Darwin and not try our kangaroo meat. You should also try our barramundi fish, it's delicious. Kangaroo meat sounds interesting. Is it tough to find it in the market? Not at all, most restaurants and markets here sells it. You can try the Mendel Beach Sunset Market, there are stalls serving exotic food there. That's a great suggestion, I'll make sure to check it out. What about activities? Do you suggest any? Definitely take a crocodile tour, it's a must. It's a unique experience, and you'll get to learn a lot about the life of crocodiles. Also, take a stroll through the George Brown Botanic Gardens, it's a serene and beautiful place. A crocodile tour sounds thrilling, and I've been waiting to explore the gardens. Thanks for the recommendations. Of course. There's so much to do here in Darwin. Have you heard of the beer, Ken Regatta? No, I haven't. What's it all about? It's an annual event here in Darwin where people race boats made entirely out of beer cans. It's hilarious and entertaining, definitely worth attending. Wow, that sounds like a blast. I'll make sure to mark that on my calendar. That's fantastic. Well, I have to go back to work now, but feel free to ask me anything if you have more questions. Thank you for your time and suggestions, I really appreciate it. Not a problem at all, have a great day. Hey, have you tried this chocolate before? It's amazing. No, I haven't. But I'm always curious about where the ingredients come from. Do you know where this chocolate is made? Oh, I'm not sure. Let me check the packaging. It says here that the cocoa beans are sourced from Ghana and Ecuador. Wow. That's interesting. I would love to try more products with ingredients from different countries. Well, you're in luck, because the store also has imported snacks from Japan, Korea, and the United States. Really? I had no idea. Are those products priced higher because they're imported? Not necessarily. I think it actually comes down to the brand and the quality of the product. But do you always look for products with imported ingredients? Hmm, not always. But I like to try new things and explore different flavors. And I think it's important to support businesses that specialize in international trade. That's a good point. And speaking of international trade, did you know that some of the products in this store are also exported to other countries? No way. That's awesome. Do you know which countries they export to? Yeah, they export some of their snacks to Southeast Asia and Australia. That's so cool. Do you think I could start my own snack export business? Why not? It's worth exploring. I could help you research the best products to export and the most profitable markets to enter. That would be amazing. Maybe we could even start our own snack brand one day. Who knows? The possibilities are endless. But for now, let's focus on trying these imported snacks and enjoying the flavors from around the world. Good morning, B. Thanks for coming to our office today. Good morning, A. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to hear about your latest projects in Melbourne. Yes, we are particularly excited about our newest development in the city center. It's going to be a mixed-use building with luxury apartments and commercial spaces. That sounds interesting. What makes this project stand out from others? Well, for starters, it has a rooftop pool with amazing views of the city. And the location is unbeatable right in the heart of the CBD. Wow, a rooftop pool in the CBD. That's definitely unique. What's the estimated return on investment for this project? We are projecting a ROI of at least 15% over the next five years. Of course, this is dependent on various factors such as property market conditions. Speaking of market conditions, have you noticed any significant changes in the Melbourne property market lately? Yes, actually. The market has been pretty strong lately, with demand outpacing supply in some areas. This bodes well for our upcoming projects. That's great to hear. So, what's your favorite thing about working in the property development industry? I love the creative aspect of developing new properties that people can enjoy and call home. And of course, seeing the return on investment when a project is successful. I can see how that would be satisfying. 
As an investor, my favorite part is seeing my money grow over time. Yes, it's a win-win situation for both parties. We get to create beautiful and functional properties, and investors get to benefit from that financially. Absolutely. Well, it was great talking with you, eh? I'm definitely interested in learning more about your upcoming projects. Thanks for your time, B. We'll be in touch. Hey B, have you heard about the data scientist we hired? I heard she's amazing at analyzing consumer behavior. Yeah, I've worked with her before. She's a wizard with data. We should definitely tap into her expertise. Absolutely. Let's take a look at the data we have and see if we can figure out some insights about our customers. Sounds like a plan. What kind of data do we have to work with? We have customer demographics, purchasing habits, and website traffic data. I think we can get a good picture of who our customers are and what they like. Great, let's start exploring the data. Do you think there are any patterns we can identify? From the demographic data, it looks like our customers are mostly in the 25 to 35 age range and live in urban areas. Maybe we should focus our marketing efforts on those demographics. That's a good idea. What about their purchasing habits? Any trends there? Well, it looks like our customers love buying our products in bulk. Maybe we should consider offering discounts for bulk purchases. Ah, uh, that's smart. And what about the website traffic data? It seems like most of our traffic comes from mobile devices. We should optimize our website for mobile to make it easier for our customers to purchase from us. Yes, good point. This data analysis is super helpful. I'm excited to see how we can use it to better serve our customers and grow our business. Same here. I'm glad we have such a great team to help us make sense of all this data. Definitely. Let's keep digging and see what other insights we can uncover. Agreed. Who knew data analysis could be so much fun? Hey B, how's it going? Not bad, just working on my new app. How about you? Same here. I'm trying to figure out how to make a cross-platform travel app. Oh cool. That's something I've been thinking about too. What's your approach? Well, I was thinking about using React Native to make it work on both iOS and Android. What do you think? React Native is great for cross-platform development, but it might not be the best fit for a travel app. What about Flutter? Flutter? I haven't used it before. Tell me more. Flutter's hot reload feature allows for rapid development and it is great performance. You should give it a try. Sounds interesting. And what about the user interface? We should focus on creating a simple and clean design. Users want something that's easy to use and looks great. Totally agree. And what about features? What do you think we should include? Well, we could add features like real-time flight updates, weather forecasts, and local recommendations. Good ideas. And what about integrating social media? Absolutely. A social media feed with user-generated content can add a personal touch to the app and help with advertising. You know what? This app is going to be amazing. For sure. We just need to make sure we test it thoroughly before release. Agreed. We don't want any bugs ruining the user experience. Definitely. And speaking of that, do you want to grab some coffee and discuss this further? Sounds like a plan. Let's do it. Hi there. It's great to be here at the beach. Yes, the sun and the sand can bring out the artist in all of us. Speaking of art, what do you think would be a good theme for an art exhibition? Hmm, well I think something that's always relevant is the concept of home. Home? That's interesting. What do you mean? Well, everyone has a different idea of what home means to them. It can be a physical space, a feeling, or even a metaphor. I see what you're saying. Home can be a very personal and emotional theme. Exactly. And since we're all spending more time at home lately, it's a topic that people can relate to. That's true. And there are so many different ways that artists could interpret the theme of home. Yes, they could create pieces that depict a sense of belonging or nostalgia, or they could touch on the idea of displacement or the feeling of being without a home. It sounds like a really rich theme to explore. Do you think it would be popular with audiences? I do. I think people would be drawn to the emotional depth of the theme and the different ways that artists would approach it. Well, I'm sold. Let's plan a home-themed exhibition. Great. I'll start reaching out to artists and see what they can come up with. Hi there. Are you a student here? Yes, I am. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm a marketing officer here. Are you interested in learning more about our school's enrollment plan? Yes, please. 
I'm curious about how the school attracts new students. Well, we have various ways to do that. We organize campus tours, participate in education fairs, promote our academic programs, and more. Do you have any ideas? Actually, I have an idea for promoting the school. Really? That's great. What's your idea? I think the school can create a promotional video that showcases the campus life and activities that students can enjoy here. That's a fantastic idea. We have a media team that can help us with that. It would be great to have students involved in creating the video too. Yes, that will make it more authentic and relatable to potential students. I agree. We can also share the video on social media platforms. That's a good idea. Social media is an effective way to reach out to younger generations. Definitely. We can also offer referral incentives to current students who successfully bring in new students. That's a good way to encourage word-of-mouth marketing. Yes, it is. Do you have any other suggestions? I think the school can also host community events that involve students and showcase their talents. Another great idea. We can definitely use our auditorium for that. Thank you. I'm glad you like my ideas. Thank you for sharing them with me. I'll take note of them and present them to the enrollment team. Hey B. I heard you had a surgery yesterday. How are you feeling? Hey A. Yeah, it was a pretty intense experience, but I'm feeling much better now. That's great to hear. Who was your doctor for the surgery? Dr. Lee. She was amazing. I honestly couldn't have asked for a better surgeon. That's great. It's always comforting to have someone who knows what they're doing. What was the surgery for, if you don't mind me asking? It was just a minor one. I had to get my gallbladder removed. Ah, uh, gotcha. Well, it's better to get those things taken care of before they become bigger issues. Yeah, definitely. Plus, the surgery itself was pretty interesting to watch. I got to see it on the monitor they had in the room. Really? That's pretty cool. Did you ask Dr. Lee any questions during the surgery? Haha, uh, no, I didn't want to distract her. But she did explain what she was doing at certain points, and it was fascinating to learn more about the procedure. I bet. Did you have any funny or weird experiences while in the surgery room? Not really, the anesthesia knocked me out pretty quickly. But when I woke up, I saw Dr. Lee wearing this funny-looking hat. Oh, really? What did it look like? It was a colorful cap with cartoon animals on it. It definitely made me laugh and put me at ease. Haha, <laughs> that's great. Well, I'm glad your surgery went smoothly and you're on the road to recovery now. Yeah, me too. Thanks for checking in on me, A. Hey. Welcome to the art exhibition. My name is A, and I will be your guide today. Thank you, A. Hey. I'm excited to explore the art on display. Excellent. This exhibition features a mix of contemporary and traditional styles. What type of art are you most interested in? I love art that tells a story. Do you have any pieces that have a good narrative? Absolutely. Over here, we have a painting called The Traveler. It depicts a man on a journey through a beautiful landscape. Wow, it's incredible how the colors and brushstrokes convey so much movement and emotion. I'm glad you appreciate it. This is actually one of my personal favorites. The artist was also inspired by his own travels and experiences. That's amazing. What other pieces would you recommend? For something more whimsical, there's a sculpture over in the corner called The Dancing Bear. It's made entirely out of recycled materials. I love that. It's so creative and eco-friendly at the same time. Yes, and the artist even gave the bear a name, Betsy. She's become quite popular among visitors. I can see why. Thanks for showing me around, A. Hey. You're a great guide. My pleasure, B. I always enjoy sharing my passion for art with others. Let me know if you have any more questions. Hi B, I'm so excited to work with you on this travel app project. Me too, A. Hey. So, what's the plan for the itinerary feature? Well, I was thinking of making it interactive and easy to use, what do you think? Sounds great. How about allowing users to drag and drop activities to different days? Yes, and we could add a filter for different types of activities like museums, restaurants, or outdoor activities. That's a great idea. And we could use GPS to suggest nearby activities based on the user's location. Amazing. We could also add a feature to allow users to share their itinerary with friends. Definitely. And we should make it easy for users to make changes to their itinerary on the go. How about adding a feature where users can leave reviews and ratings for the activities they've done? 
Yes, that would be helpful for other users. And we could display the most popular activities in a separate section. Love it. And what about adding a feature to show estimated travel time between activities? Brilliant. We could even use AI to analyze traffic and suggest the best route. Yes, that would make travel planning so much easier. Overall, the itinerary feature would be the highlight of our travel app. I agree, A. I can't wait to see the final product and how our users will enjoy planning their trips. Hey, have you heard about ISO 27001 certification process? Yeah, I have. It's a way to ensure that a company has a strong information security management system, right? Exactly. And did you know that there are some evaluation criteria that companies need to meet to get certified? Really? What kind of criteria? Well, for example, the company needs to have a risk assessment process in place to identify potential security threats. Ah, that makes sense. What about policies and procedures? Yeah, they need to have documented policies and procedures that cover all aspects of information security. Okay, so what happens if a company doesn't meet those criteria? They won't get certified. But the good news is that they can always make improvements and try again. Right, I guess it's a good motivator for companies to stay on top of their security practices. Absolutely. And it's not just important for the company itself, but also for their customers and partners who rely on them to keep their data safe. Yeah, I wouldn't want to deal with a company that doesn't take security seriously. Me neither. That's why it's so great that there's a standardized way of evaluating and certifying companies. Definitely. And who knows, maybe one day we'll be the ones helping companies get certified. Huh. That would be the day. But for now, let's just focus on improving our own information security practices. Welcome to our yoga class, B. Are you excited for today's session? Yes, I am. I have been feeling quite stressed out lately and I heard yoga can help with that. Definitely. Yoga is not just about physical exercise, but also about mental relaxation. Let's start with some breathing exercises. Taking deep breaths, wow, that already feels so calming. Great job. Now let's move on to some poses. We'll start with the downward facing dog. Whoa, this is harder than it looks. It takes time and practice. One of the most important things in yoga is to listen to your body and not push yourself too hard. Got it. Struggling to hold the pose. Giggling, and remember, it's okay to fall over. We all do it at some point. Laughing, that's good to know. All right, let's move on to some hip openers. These can be a little uncomfortable at first, but they're great for releasing tension. Grimacing, I can definitely feel that. Just breathe through it. And remember, it's not about achieving the perfect pose, it's about doing what feels good for your body. Thanks, I needed to hear that. Smiling. You're doing great, B. Let's end with some final stretches and a relaxation pose. Sighing, that feels amazing. Glad to hear it. How do you feel overall? I feel so much more relaxed and at ease. I can't wait for the next session. That's great to hear. See you next time. Hi there. I noticed you're a chef at this restaurant. Do you mind if I ask you a question about seafood? Of course not. I'm always happy to talk about seafood. What do you want to know? Well, as a scuba diver, I know that some of the best seafood comes from the ocean. Do you have any tips on how to get the freshest seafood? Absolutely. The key is to buy seafood that was just caught. It's especially important for shellfish and other delicate seafood. That makes sense. Do you have any recommendations for where to get the best seafood in this area? Definitely the local fish market. They have a great selection of seafood that's fresh from the boats. Oh, I've never been there before. Do you have any tips for shopping there? Sure. Always ask what's the freshest catch of the day. And if you're buying whole fish, look for clear eyes and bright red gills. Those are great tips. What are some of your favorite seafood dishes to cook? I love making grilled shrimp with garlic butter. And our seafood risotto is always a hit with customers. Yum, both of those sound amazing. I'll have to try them next time I visit your restaurant. Please do. And if you ever catch any fresh seafood yourself, feel free to bring it in and we'll cook it up for you. That's very kind of you. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks for chatting with me about seafood. Anytime. It's always great to talk to someone who shares a passion for fresh seafood. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see all of you here today. Good morning, A. We're excited to hear about the company strategy for the upcoming year. Of course. I hope you're ready for some exciting updates. 
Our focus is going to be on innovation and customer satisfaction. That sounds great. Can you give us some examples of how we plan to achieve that? Absolutely. We're going to be investing in new technology to enhance our products, and we're also going to be gathering customer feedback to improve their experience. That's a great plan. What about our competition? How do we plan to stay ahead of them? We're going to be keeping a close eye on our competitors and analyzing their strategies. We want to learn from them and improve upon what they're doing. Excellent. How about our team? Are there any changes we should expect? Yes, we'll be hiring more talent to join our team. We want to bring in people who share our core values and can contribute to our innovation efforts. That's exciting news. I'm sure everyone will be thrilled to hear that. Anything else we should know? Just that we're committed to delivering top-notch products and services to our customers. Their satisfaction is what drives us, and we'll continue to make that our top priority. Thanks for sharing all of that with us, Hey, We're excited to see all of these changes take place. Thank you, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you to achieve our goals. Let's go make it happen. Hi, B. How's your day going so far? It's going well, A. I've been busy testing the website's performance. Impressive. What tools are you using to test the website's performance? I'm using a combination of webpagetist.org and Google PageSpeed Insights to measure load times and page speed. What about you, A? I'm optimizing the website's code by minifying CSS and JavaScript files to reduce load times. Have you found any issues during your testing? Yes, I found that the images on the homepage were taking a long time to load. I suggested compressing the images to improve page speed. That's a great suggestion. Have you tried enabling caching on the website to improve performance? Yes, I did. I found that it improved performance significantly, but I'm still testing to make sure it doesn't negatively impact user experience. It's always a balancing act. Have you considered using a CDN? Yes, I suggested it to our team. A CDN would improve website load times by caching content on servers closer to the user's location. That's definitely an effective solution. You're doing a great job, B. Thank you, A. It's a team effort, and I'm happy to be contributing to the website's success. Yes, it definitely takes a team to create a great website. Thanks for all your hard work, B. No problem, A. I'm always happy to help. Good morning, B. How are you doing today? Good morning, A. I'm doing well, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing great. The weather is perfect for some hot tea and steamed dumplings. Yes, it is. Speaking of which, have you tried the new red bean paste buns we made yesterday? No, not yet. How are they? They're delicious. The filling is sweet and creamy, and the bun is soft and fluffy. Sounds amazing. I can't wait to try one. I'll bring some over to your shop later today. By the way, how's business been? It's been pretty steady. Lots of tourists coming in to try our authentic Hong Kong-style dim sum. That's great to hear. We've been getting a lot of positive reviews for our mango sago and egg tarts. Yes, they're definitely crowd favorites. By the way, have you thought about making any new desserts? Yes, I was thinking of trying to make a durian pancake. Have you ever had one before? No, but I've heard they're an acquired taste. Still, I'm excited to try it and see how it turns out. I'll make a few batches and we can see how it goes. It might be a hit with the durian lovers out there. For sure. And who knows, maybe it'll convert some durian skeptics too. You never know. That's the fun of being in the food business, you get to experiment and try new things. Absolutely. Speaking of which, I have some ideas for some new dumpling fillings. Maybe we could collaborate and come up with something unique. I love that idea. Let's get together and brainstorm later this week. Sounds good. And let me know when those red bean paste buns are ready. I'm getting hungry just thinking about them. Will do, A. Hey. See you later. Hey B, how's it going? We have a big project ahead of us, protecting our clients' financial information. Hey A, I'm good, thanks. Yeah, this is a big deal, we have to be very careful. Definitely. Have you thought about implementing two-factor authentication? Yes, that's a good idea. But we should also consider using biometric measures, like facial recognition or fingerprints, for added security. I totally agree. And we can't forget about training our staff to recognize potential phishing and other cyber attacks. Right. We should also conduct regular security audits to identify any vulnerabilities and fix them before they are exploited. 
that's a great point. And we could use data analytics to identify abnormal activity patterns that could signify a breach. Yes, that's another good idea. We should also have a crisis management plan in place, just in case something does happen. Absolutely. We need to be prepared for the worst-case scenario. But let's not forget the basics too, like regularly updating our software and ensuring our firewalls are up to date. Good point, eh? Sometimes the simple things are the most effective. Agreed. And if we do all this, we can ensure that our customers' financial information is kept safe and secure. Exactly. It's our job to protect them, and we can't take that responsibility lightly. Well said, B. Now let's get to work on this project and make it a success. Let's do it. Hi there. You must be the owner of this restaurant. Yes, that's right. What can I help you with today? I'm a fisherman, and I wanted to know if you're interested in buying some fresh seafood for your restaurant. Of course. We pride ourselves on having the freshest seafood in town. Well, I have some jumbo prawns that I caught this morning. They're still alive and kicking, so they're as fresh as can be. That sounds amazing. We go through so many prawns, especially during the busy season. How much are you asking for them? I'm willing to sell them to you for a fair price, say $15 per kilogram. Sounds good to me. Can you deliver them to the restaurant later today? Certainly. I'll be back in a few hours with your order. Great. I can't wait to try them out. Do you have any recommendations on how to prepare them? Well, grilled prawns with garlic and lemon is always a hit. Or you can try a prawn scampi with linguine. Both those dishes sound mouth-watering. I think I'll have to try them both. Thanks for the suggestions. No problem. Happy to help. And if you ever need any more seafood, you know who to call. Definitely. Thanks again for stopping by, and I'll see you soon with the prawns. Looking forward to it. Have a great day. Hey B, have you heard about ISO 27001 penetration testing? Yeah, I have. It sounds like a fancy schmancy way of testing security systems. That's a good way to put it. But it's also an essential part of ensuring a business's cybersecurity. I guess that means it's not all fun and games. No, definitely not. But that doesn't mean we can't make it interesting. All right, hit me with some interesting facts. Did you know that in some cases, the pen testers get to play the role of the bad guy and use their skills to hack into a company's systems? That sounds like a villain's job. I hope they aren't using evil laughter while doing it. Haha, <laughs> I hope not too. But they do get to use some pretty cool tools, like vulnerability scanners and social engineering techniques. Wow, I didn't think penetrating could be so sophisticated. Well, when it comes to cybersecurity, you have to stay one step ahead of the hackers. Right, and that's why ISO 27001 penetration testing is so important. Absolutely. It's a way to proactively identify weaknesses before they can be exploited. Looks like I have some studying to do. Don't worry, we can learn together. And who knows, maybe one day we'll be the ones doing the pen testing. Now that's a cool job title. Penetration tester, at your service. Good morning, B. Are you ready to tackle this project? Hey, hey. Absolutely, I'm excited to get started. All right, firstly, let's discuss the problem we're trying to solve. Definitely, we want to create a trustworthy blockchain application that can store and share data securely. Great, so what approach do you suggest we take with this? I think the first step would be to define what kinds of data we want to store and for whom. That's a good point. Let's break it down by industry and work from there. Sure, we can start with healthcare, finance, and logistics each presents unique challenges. Okay, let's prioritize logistics since they have a pressing need for secure data storage. In that case, we'll need to ensure that the system is tamper-proof and reliable enough for critical data like shipping routes and manifests. Got it. How about we use smart contracts to ensure that transactions are processed automatically and without errors? Sounds like a good plan. But we'll need to ensure that our smart contract code is secure and can't be exploited by hackers. Absolutely, we don't want any vulnerabilities in our system. Do you think we should consider a private blockchain versus a public one? In our case, a private blockchain would be more appropriate for logging sensitive data only accessible to authorized users. Agreed. We'll also need to consider scalability since the demand for data storage and retrieval will increase as we grow. Yes, we can use sharding or sidechains to ensure that the network is robust and can handle additional users and data. Okay, we have a solid foundation for our application now. How about we start working on the actual coding? 
Sounds good. Let's start by defining the architecture and programming languages we'll use. I was thinking of using the Ethereum platform and Solidity for coding the smart contracts. Ethereum is a good choice since it's widely used and the documentation is comprehensive. We can also consider using other languages like Rust or Python for developing the front end. Perfect. We'll divide the tasks accordingly and start working from there. Thanks for your insight, B. Anytime, A. I'm excited to see how this turns out. Hey B, what's up? I heard we're working on a new social media platform. Do you have any ideas for the design? Hey, good to see you. Yeah, I've been thinking about it. I believe the user interface should be more intuitive and user-friendly. I couldn't agree more. We should make it easier for users to navigate through the platform without feeling overwhelmed. Exactly. We also need to create a unique and interesting design that stands out from other social media platforms. How about adding some cool animations and interactive features to make the user experience more engaging? That sounds like a great idea. We could use some sleek color schemes and typography to make it look more appealing as well. Right, and we should make sure the platform works seamlessly across all devices, desktop, mobile, and tablet. Definitely. It's important to keep in mind that the platform should be accessible and enjoyable to use on all screen sizes. What about integrating some social features like sharing, commenting, and liking? Yes, those features are essential for a social media platform. But we can take it a step further by adding personalized recommendations and user-generated content sections. Wow, those are some innovative ideas. We should also make sure to prioritize data privacy and security for our users. Absolutely. We need to build trust with our users by providing a secure platform that respects their privacy. How about involving users in the design process through surveys or feedback forms? Good point. By getting feedback from users, we can create a platform tailored to their needs and preferences. Exactly. And we should continuously test and iterate the design to ensure it's always improving. That's a great way to maintain and improve user satisfaction. Plus, it shows that we care about their experience. Agreed. It's clear that designing a social media platform is more than just aesthetics. It's about creating an enjoyable and secure digital space for our users. Precisely. Let's work together to create the best social media platform out there. Hey, have you been to the new art exhibit downtown? No, I haven't. What's it all about? It's really cool. It's all modern art, funky sculptures, and abstract paintings. Hmm, I'm not really into modern art. I prefer classic paintings like Rembrandt and Van Gogh. Yeah, but you have to admit, some of the stuff at the exhibit is pretty out there. It's great how it challenges you to think outside the box. I see your point. Maybe I should give it a chance. What's your favorite piece at the exhibit? Definitely the interactive installation. You get to be part of the art and move things around to create different patterns. That does sound cool. I'm more into photography myself. Have you seen any good photography exhibits lately? Actually, yes. There's a great photography exhibit at the museum right now. It's all about street photography and capturing life in the city. That sounds fascinating. I would love to go check it out. Do you need to be a photography buff to appreciate it? Not at all. The exhibit really shows how photographers can capture the energy and uniqueness of everyday life in the city. It's really accessible and engaging. I'm definitely going to have to put that on my to-do list. You always have the best recommendations. Thanks, I love exploring new exhibits and experiences. It's all about broadening your horizons and seeing the world in new and exciting ways. I couldn't agree more. Who knows? Maybe we'll even be inspired to break out the paintbrushes and start creating our own art. Huh, don't tempt me. Maybe we'll start our own exhibit one day. Hey, stranger things have happened. Let's start brainstorming some ideas. Hi B, it's great to see you here in my office. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay, just a little nervous about our legal situation. But I know I'm in good hands with you, A. Eh? Don't worry, B. We'll get through this together. Now, what can I do for you? Well, I need some advice on how to handle my recent arrest for jaywalking. I know it may seem minor, but I don't want it to affect my record. Laughing, jaywalking, really? I thought you were more of a rule follower, B. Laughing, I know, I know. But you know how it is. Sometimes you're in a hurry and you just cross when you shouldn't. Smiling, I understand. Let me take a look at your case and we'll see what we can do. Thank you so much, A. I really appreciate it. Of course, that's what I'm here for. 
So, have you been keeping up with the latest legal dramas on TV? Laughing, actually, I have. It's funny how they always make lawyers look so slick and cool. I know, right? If only we could be that glamorous in real life. Laughing, Will, you always look pretty cool to me, eh? Smiling, ah, uh, thanks, B. You're making me blush. Laughing, so, what kind of lawyer quirks do you have? Do you have a favorite legal phrase that you like to use? Laughing, hmm, well I do tend to say objection, a lot, but that's more for dramatic effect. Laughing, I can imagine you doing that in court. So, what's the most interesting case you've ever worked on? Thinking, you know, I once had a client who claimed they were being haunted by a ghost. We had to prove that the ghost was not real in order to win the case. Laughing, that's crazy. Did you win? Laughing, yes, we did. We were able to prove that there was no evidence of a ghost and it was all in their head. Laughing, well, you're not just a good lawyer, but also a ghost debunker. Thanks for everything, A. Eh? Smiling, anytime, B. Let's get to work on that jaywalking case now. Hi, I'm A, the front-end engineer. Nice to meet you, B, the website designer. Nice to meet you too, A. Eh? I heard we are here to brainstorm some ideas to improve the website traffic. Yeah, that's right. We need to redesign the website and make it more impactful. What's your initial thought? Well, we need to make the website more responsive and user-friendly. What do you think? I totally agree with you. We need to focus on optimization and make sure that it is fast and responsive. We also need to ensure that it is accessible across all devices. Absolutely. We can't afford to lose traffic because the website is not compatible with all devices. So, how do you think we can improve the user experience? One thing we could do is simplify the navigation process. We can make it more intuitive and provide clear calls to action so that users find it easy to get around. That's a great idea. We should also focus on the layout and make sure that it is clean and inviting. Yes, we need to ensure that the typography is easy to read and the images are optimized for quick loading. We should also make sure that the website is SEO friendly. Absolutely. We need to make sure that our page titles and descriptions are properly done so that search engines can pick them up quickly. Also, we can add a blog to the website to keep the content fresh and dynamic. It will also help to keep the readers engaged. Good point, A. Eh? We should also consider adding a social media plugin so that people can share our articles easily. It will also help to spread the word around. Yeah, maybe we can add a newsletter sign-up form. It will keep the audience informed about the latest news and articles. I like it. We can also add some interactive elements such as quizzes, polls, and surveys to keep the audience interested. That's interesting. We could also add a commenting system to allow readers to comment and interact with the authors. Great idea, A. Eh? We should also consider adding a chatbot to handle common questions and offer support. It will save time and improve the user experience. I agree, B. We can also add video content to make the website more engaging and dynamic. Yes, and we should also create a landing page to promote the website and attract more visitors. Great. We have a lot of ideas to work with. Let's start implementing them and see the traffic soar. Sounds like a plan, eh? Let's do this. Hey B, great to see you again. How's everything going? Good to see you too, eh? I've been busy, but things are pretty good. How about you? I'm doing well, thanks. I'm excited to talk to you about our project today. We've got to make some changes for the website. Sure thing, what's the situation? We've received some feedback that users are having trouble navigating the website easily. I think we need to improve the UI design and optimize the front end. Ah, so we need to make it easier for people to find what they're looking for on the site. I'm on board with that. What ideas do you have for the design changes? I was thinking we could simplify the layout, use more white space, and create a more consistent color scheme. We could also add more call-to-action buttons. That sounds like a good start. As for the front end, I think we should focus on making the site responsive, optimizing load times, and improving accessibility. Excellent suggestion. What do you need from me to make that happen? If you could provide me with the design files and specifications, we can work together to create a site that looks great and functions smoothly. Sounds like the perfect collaboration. I can't wait to see the final product. Me neither. Let's make it happen and deliver a site that everyone loves to use. Absolutely. This is going to be so much fun. Let's get to work and make this happen together. Hey B, have you heard of ISO 27001? Yes, I have. 
It's a standard for information security management system, right? That's right. Have you ever implemented it in your company? No, not yet. But I'm interested in learning more about it. Have you implemented it before? Yes, I have. It was a challenging but rewarding experience. What kind of challenges did you face? Well, there were a lot of policies and procedures to put in place, but the hardest part was getting everyone on board with the changes. I can imagine that must have been tough. Yeah, but it's worth it. It really helps to ensure the security of your company's information. That's true. I heard that it can also help with legal and regulatory compliance. Yes, it definitely can. It can also improve your company's reputation with customers and partners. That sounds like a win-win situation. It really is. If you're interested in implementing ISO 27001, I can give you some tips and advice. That would be great. Thank you so much. No problem. Just remember, it's important to have a strong leadership commitment and involve everyone in the process. Got it. Thanks again for your help. Hey B, have you heard about the ISO 27001 Mobile Device Management MDM, standard? No, I haven't. What is it? It's a standard for managing mobile devices such as smartphones and tablets in a secure and efficient way. That sounds interesting. How does it work? Basically, it sets out guidelines for things like password policies, encryption, and remote wiping of devices. Ah, uh, I see. So it's about making sure that company data stays safe on employees' phones and tablets? Exactly. It's becoming more and more important as mobile devices play a bigger role in the workplace. I can imagine. So what kinds of things does the standard cover? It covers everything from setting up secure connections to corporate systems to monitoring employee usage of mobile devices. That sounds like a lot of work. Are there any benefits to following the standard? Definitely. By following the ISO 27001 MDM standard, companies can reduce the risk of data breaches, improve their overall information security, and even save money on support costs. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Have you worked with companies that have implemented the standard? Yes, I have. It's amazing how much more in control companies feel over their mobile devices once they follow the standard. I can imagine. It's great to see that there's a standard out there to help companies keep their mobile devices secure. Absolutely. And with more and more companies going mobile, it's going to be even more important in the years ahead. Hey there, B. How was your weekend? It was great, thanks for asking. How about you? Not bad, not bad. Anyway, we have a meeting with the boss in the conference room, so let's get going. Sure thing. I hope it's not going to be too boring. Yeah, me too. But you know how the boss can be, always serious, and all. That's true. But let's hope he'll surprise us with a bit of humor this time. I doubt it, but we can always dream. Hey, did you hear about the time he tried to tell a joke during a meeting and nobody left? No, what happened? Well, he got really embarrassed and ended up making a bunch of dad jokes the whole meeting just to try and make up for it. Oh, that's hilarious. I wish I could have been there to see it. Yeah, it was pretty funny. Hey, do you think we should bring some snacks for the meeting? Good idea. Some chocolate, maybe? Or chips? Both sound good to me. Let's stop by the vending machine on the way. All right, let's go. I have a feeling this meeting is going to be a long one. True, but with snacks and each other's company, we can survive anything. Agreed. Let's rock this meeting. Hey there, B. How's it going today? Hey, A. It's going well, thanks for asking. How about you? Same here, thanks. Listen, I was thinking about how we could use machine learning to improve our credit scoring system. What do you think? That's a great idea. We can use various models to predict the creditworthiness of a person based on their financial history. Exactly. Do you think we should go for supervised learning or unsupervised learning? Well, supervised learning can help us classify individuals into good or bad credit score categories based on labeled data. On the other hand, unsupervised learning can help us discover patterns in the data and group people based on their similarities. Hmm, that's an interesting point. But which one do you think would be more efficient? I think both have their own strengths and weaknesses. We could try both and see which works better for our system. Okay, sounds like a plan. But what kind of features should we focus on while building this model? We could start with basic financial details such as income, credit card usage, and loan repayment history. 
Later, we could add more features like social media behavior, buying patterns, and other factors that could affect creditworthiness. I see. But how will we train the machine learning model? Won't we need lots of data for that? Yes, we'll need a lot of data to train the model. We can use historical credit data and also incentivize customers to share their data with us by offering good interest rates or other benefits. That's a good idea. But what about privacy concerns? Won't customers be hesitant to share their financial data with us? That's a valid concern. We can assure customers that their data will be stored securely and anonymously and that it will only be used for credit scoring purposes. All right, but how do we ensure that the model is unbiased and not discriminating against certain groups of people? We'll need to be careful while selecting the features and also ensure that the data we use is diverse and representative of the entire population. We can also use fairness metrics to evaluate the model's performance and ensure that it's not discriminating against any group of people. Wow, that's so cool. I knew machine learning was powerful, but I had no idea we could use it for credit scoring. Yeah, we could also use it for fraud detection and other financial applications. The possibilities are endless. This is so exciting. Thanks for discussing this with me, B. Let's get started building this model. My pleasure, A. Let's get to work. Hello, my name is A. Nice to meet you. Hi, A. I'm B. It's nice to meet you too. So, what kind of breads and pastries are you planning to bake today? I'm thinking of making some croissants and baguettes. How about you? I'll be making some chocolate tarts and fruit danishes. It's always great to have a good variety for our customers, isn't it? Absolutely. We want to make sure everyone finds something they like. Speaking of which, have you tried our coffee yet? Not yet, but I've heard it's really good. Oh, it is. Our beans are freshly roasted and sourced from local farms. That's fantastic. So, do you have any tips for baking great croissants? Yes, you need to make sure the butter is cold and the dough is rested properly. It takes time, but the end result is worth it. Thanks for the advice. And do you have any favorite pastries that you like to make? I love making eclairs. There's something satisfying about piping the cream filling into the pastry shells. That sounds delicious. I'm more of a tart person myself. Well, the good news is we don't have to choose between sweet and savory. We can have it all. You're right, we have the best of both worlds here. And with our combined skills, we can make some amazing treats. Absolutely. Let's get to work, Chef A. Good morning, class. How was everyone's weekend? Hi, teacher. My weekend was great. I went to the beach with my friends. How about you? I had a relaxing weekend. I caught up on some reading and watched a movie. But now, let's get down to business. Today, we will be learning about idioms. Oh, that sounds interesting. Can you give us an example? Sure. The ball is in your court means it's your turn to make a decision or take action. Ah, uh, I understand now. Can we try to use some more idioms in our conversation? Of course. Let's make it a challenge. The first one to use an idiom correctly gets a bonus point. Challenge accepted. Let's cut to the chase and start with the lesson. Very good, student B. That's correct. But let's not put all our eggs in one basket and try to come up with different idioms. Anyone else? Excellent, student C. Now let's see if we can use all these idioms in one sentence. Let's cut to the chase. The ball is in your court, but don't put all your eggs in one basket, because we might end up barking up the wrong tree. Laughs, that sounds like a tongue twister. But I get it. I'm glad to hear that. Now let's continue our lesson on idioms. Maybe we can even create our own idioms by the end of class. That sounds like a fun challenge. Let's go the extra mile and learn more about idioms. You're on a roll, student B. Keep it up. I have a feeling you'll be making up your own idioms in no time. You're welcome, student C. And thank you, everyone, for your participation. Let's end today's class on a high note and keep our eyes peeled for more fun activities next time. Good morning, welcome to our store. Are you here for our promotion event today? Yes, I saw the advertisement outside and decided to come and have a look. What's on offer? We have discounts on selected items, and if you spend over $100, you can also receive a free gift. Wow, that sounds really great. What items are on sale? We have some great deals on clothes, electronics, and home goods. Have you looked around yet? Not yet. I just got here. But I'm thinking of buying a new pair of shoes. Great choice. 
you'll find plenty of options to choose from in our shoe department. What style are you after? I'm looking for something comfortable but stylish, maybe something with a pop of color. That's definitely doable. How about these sneakers? They have a sleek design and come in a range of colors. These look perfect. And they're on sale too? Yes, they are. And don't forget, if you spend over $100, you can also get a free gift. I think I could definitely spend over $100 here. There are so many things I want to buy. We have lots of great deals today, so take your time and let us know if you need any assistance. I will, thank you. This is such a fun shopping event. I'm glad I came. It's our pleasure. We always love having our customers come and find great deals. Enjoy your shopping. Hi there, I'm your photographer for today's photo shoot. Are you excited? Hi. Yes, I'm super excited. I've always wanted to do a photo shoot on the beach. Great. Let's get started then. I think we can start with some casual, beachy shots. Sounds perfect. Do you have any ideas for poses? How about you walking along the shore while looking back at the camera with a big smile on your face? I love that idea. Let's do it. Awesome, let's get some shots with the sun setting in the background too. And maybe some with you sitting on the lifeguard tower? Yes, that sounds amazing. How about we do some fun shots too? Like me jumping in the air or doing a cartwheel? That's a great idea. Let's also try some more high fashion poses too. Maybe something with you holding a hat or looking off into the distance? Sure, that sounds like fun. I have a few different outfits so we can switch it up and get a variety of shots. Perfect, that will make for a great portfolio. Speaking of which, where are you planning on using these photos? I'm hoping to use them for my modeling portfolio and for my social media accounts. Well, I'm sure they'll turn out amazing. You're a natural in front of the camera. Thank you so much, that means a lot coming from you. No problem at all. We still have some time left, so let's keep shooting until the sun goes down. Sounds good to me. Thank you for making this experience so much fun and for capturing some great shots. It was my pleasure. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of it. Hi there. Are you ready to take some fantastic shots of the Statue of Liberty? Yes, I am. This monument has been on my bucket list for years. Awesome. This iconic statue was gifted to the U.S. by the French in 1886 as a symbol of freedom and democracy. I never knew that. Thank you for sharing that piece of history. No worries. Now, where would you like me to stand so you can capture the perfect shot? How about over there where the sun is shining on the statue's face? Excellent choice. Now let's strike a pose and give those cameras a big smile. I'm not much of a model, but I'll try my best. Don't worry, just have fun with it. Oh, and don't forget to take advantage of the stunning New York skyline as the backdrop. Wow, this view is breathtaking. I'll definitely be adding this photo to my Instagram. Of course. And speaking of photos, have you heard of the famous Lady Liberty selfie? No, what is that? It's pretty simple. All you have to do is angle your camera up towards the statue's face like this, and then take a selfie with the statue in the background. Oh, I get it. Let me give it a try. Perfect. That's one for the photo album. Thanks for choosing our tour, and enjoy the rest of your time in New York City. Thank you so much for the amazing experience. I'll definitely recommend this tour to my friends. Hey B, I've been thinking about designing a new game website. What do you think? Sounds exciting. What kind of game were you thinking about? Well, I was thinking about a platformer game with some puzzles and quests. What do you think? Sounds good. We can add some cool animations and graphics to make it more engaging. Yeah. And we can use HTML5 Canvas to create the game. Great idea. We can also use CSS3 to add some visual effects. Definitely. And we can use JavaScript to handle the game logic. Yeah, that's a good choice. And for the back end, we can use PHP, right? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. We can also use MySQL for the database. Sounds like a solid plan. We also need to think about the game mechanics. How difficult do you want the game to be? I was thinking about a medium difficulty level, but we can add some options to adjust the difficulty. Good idea. And what about the storyline? Do you have anything in mind? Not yet, but I'm open to suggestions. How about a quest to save a princess from a dragon? It's a classic storyline. Haha, <laughs> that sounds cliche, but it does work. 
Let's brainstorm some ideas for the quests and puzzles. Sure, let's do it. We can also add some mini games and challenges to keep the players engaged. Yeah, that's a good idea. And we can use social media integration to allow players to share their progress. And we can also add some leaderboards and achievements to make it more competitive. Perfect. I'm excited about this project. Let's start working on it. Count me in. I can't wait to see the finished website. Good morning, Professor B. How are you today? Good morning, Professor A. I'm doing well, thanks for asking. How about you? I'm doing fine, thanks. I've called you here to discuss the course schedules for next quarter. Do you have any suggestions? Yes, actually. I was thinking of offering an elective course on the history of board games. I think it would be a fun and unique learning experience for our students. That does sound interesting. What kind of games would you cover in the course? Well, I was thinking of starting with ancient games like Go and Chess, and then moving on to more modern games like Monopoly and Settlers of Caton. We could also discuss the cultural significance of each game and how it has evolved over the years. I like that idea. Is there anything else you'd like to propose? Yes, I was also thinking of offering a workshop on effective communication skills. It's a topic that's becoming more and more important in today's fast-paced world, and I think our students could really benefit from it. That's a great idea. Who were you thinking of bringing in to lead the workshop? I have a colleague who works in the field of corporate training and has a lot of experience teaching communication skills. I think he would be a great fit for the workshop. All right, let me make note of that. Is there anything else we need to cover? No, I think that's all for now. Thank you for taking the time to meet with me, Professor A. No problem, thank you for your suggestions. Let's reconvene in a few weeks to finalize the course schedules. Hi, I heard we're tasked with building a new energy monitoring and prediction system. I'm excited to get started. Yes, me too. Do you have any experience working with machine learning algorithms that could assist with our predictions? Definitely. In fact, I think we should look into using artificial neural networks. They're great at finding patterns in large data sets. That's a great idea. But we'll also need to make sure the system is scalable and can handle real-time data. Any thoughts on how to achieve that? Well, we could use a distributed computing framework like Apache Spark. It can handle large amounts of data and parallelize computations. Excellent suggestion. How about the user interface? It needs to be user-friendly and intuitive for operators. I agree. We could consider using a dashboard with interactive visualizations. It'll make it easy for operators to monitor and predict energy production. Nice. And we need to make sure the system is secure too. What strategies do you have in mind? We could use encryption and access controls and also implement regular security audits to keep everything safe and secure. That's crucial. How about dealing with data quality issues? Can you think of any strategies to ensure our data is accurate and reliable? We could use data validation techniques and perform regular data cleaning operations to ensure we're working with clean data. Also, it's important to do regular quality checks and audits to ensure data quality. Those are great ideas. Do you have any other suggestions? Yes, we could consider using real-time monitoring technologies like Internet of Things, IoT, devices to make sure we're capturing data accurately and in real time. That's a great idea. We could install sensors in various parts of the energy production process to ensure data is captured accurately and in real time. Yes, it's a great way to optimize our energy production and maintain a steady output. Absolutely. This system will really help us improve our efficiency and stay ahead of the curve. I'm really excited about this project. With our combined expertise, we can make a system that could revolutionize the energy production industry. Couldn't agree more. Let's get started and make it happen. Hey there, B. How's it going? All good, A. I'm excited to discuss our game UI design today. Me too. So, do you have any ideas to make the UI more immersive for players? Yes, I was thinking of incorporating some 3D elements like we did in the last game. It really helped players feel like they were part of the game world. That's a great idea. We could also add some dynamic lighting effects to create a more realistic atmosphere. Definitely. And what about the color scheme? I was thinking of using some vibrant colors that match the game's theme. I like that idea too. We could even customize the UI based on the different levels of the game to give players a sense of progression. That's a good point. And speaking of progression, what about adding some interactive elements to the UI, like mini-games for challenges? I love that idea. 
it could really motivate players to keep playing and exploring the game. Absolutely. And what about the layout? We need to make sure the UI is easy to navigate and doesn't distract from the gameplay. Yes, we should definitely keep it simple and intuitive. And maybe we could add some tooltips to help guide players through the different features. Great idea. And what about the sound effects? I think we could use some catchy sound effects to match the UI animations. I agree. It's amazing how much difference the right sound effects can make. It could really enhance the player's experience. Definitely. And let's not forget about the font. It should be easy to read and match the game style. Right. And maybe we could even add some animations to the font to make it more dynamic. Yes, like a handwritten effect or something. That could really give the UI some personality. Exactly. I love it when UI designers pay attention to those little details. It really shows that we care about the player's experience. Absolutely. I think we're on the right track, eh? This is going to be an awesome game UI design. Hey B, how's it going? Ready to tackle this e-commerce project? Definitely. I can't wait to design something beautiful and user-friendly. Great. So what kind of features do you have in mind for the website? Well, I was thinking of incorporating a clean and modern layout with plenty of white space and easy-to-navigate menus. Sounds good to me. What about the product pages? How do you envision those? I think we should keep the product pages minimalistic and focused on high-quality images and ensure that the add-to-cart and checkout are always easily accessible. Totally agree. And what about the checkout process? Any ideas for making that as smooth as possible? Hmm, well I think we should make sure that the checkout is as streamlined as possible and offer a variety of payment options. Maybe we could even include a progress bar to show customers how far along they are in the process. Good thinking. And what about the overall color palette? Any thoughts on that? I think we should use a monochromatic color scheme with pops of color to draw attention to important features such as the call to action buttons. That's a great idea. Now, what about mobile responsiveness? How do we ensure that the website looks and functions just as well on smaller screens? We'll need to make sure that the layout is scalable and that the navigation is always intuitive, regardless of the device being used. Agreed. And what about user feedback? How can we make sure we're getting the necessary input to continually improve the site? Perhaps we could implement a feedback button or even just include a simple survey at the end of the checkout process to gauge customer satisfaction. I like it. It looks like we're off to a great start. Thanks for your input, B. Thank you, A. I'm excited to see what we can create together. Hello. How can I help you today? Hi there. I'm looking for some advice on which vitamins and supplements I should be taking. Sure thing. What kind of issues or concerns are you looking to address? Well, I want to make sure I'm getting all the nutrients I need to maintain my overall health and wellness. Great. We have a variety of options to choose from. Do you prefer a multivitamin or would you rather target specific areas like bone health or immune support? Hmm, maybe a multivitamin would be best. Do you have any recommendations? Absolutely. Our top-selling multivitamin contains all the essential vitamins and minerals plus antioxidants and probiotics to support digestive health. That sounds perfect. Should I take it with food? Yes, it's always best to take vitamins with a meal to aid in absorption. And if you're concerned about any potential interactions with other medications, it's a good idea to check with your doctor. Good to know. What about supplements like fish oil or protein powder? Those can definitely be beneficial, but it really depends on your individual needs and goals. For instance, fish oil can help with joint pain, while protein powder can aid in muscle recovery after workouts. Interesting. I'll have to do some more research, but thanks for your help today. Of course, happy to assist anytime. Don't hesitate to come back if you have any further questions. Good morning, B. Thank you for being here on time. No problem, A. I'm always excited to work with you on this movie. Great to hear that. So, how was your weekend? It was good. I went hiking with some friends. How about you? I stayed at home and binge-watched some TV shows. Anyway, let's get started with the first scene. Sure. What's my motivation for this scene? You're supposed to be surprised when you see the ghost. Got it. Should I scream or something? Yes, a little bit of scream, but not too much to scare the audience away. I'll try my best. By the way, have you tried the coffee at the catering table yet? Yes, it's amazing. I think I've had like four cups already. 
Ha ha, I'll have to try it later. So, do you have any plans for the weekend? Not really. Maybe I'll catch up on some sleep. Sounds like a plan. Oh, do you have any feedback on my performance in the last scene? Actually, I was really impressed. You nailed it. Thank you. I always try my best. Can't wait to see the final product. Same here. Okay, let's shoot the next scene. Ready when you are. Hi there. What brings you in today? I've been feeling a little dizzy lately and my stomach has been hurting. Okay, let's start with checking your blood pressure and temperature. Your blood pressure is a little high, but your temperature is normal. Have you been feeling stressed lately? Yes, work has been really busy. That could be the cause. Try to take breaks and relax throughout the day. And let's run some blood tests, just to be sure. Sounds good to me. Is there anything I should avoid eating? Just stay away from spicy and greasy foods for now. How about exercising? I've been slacking on that too. Well, it's a great stress reliever and can also improve your blood pressure. Maybe try yoga or even just a walk in the park. Thanks for the advice, doctor. Is there anything else I should know? Just make sure to get plenty of sleep and stay hydrated. And if any new symptoms arise, don't hesitate to come back in. Thanks for everything, doctor. Anytime, feel better soon. Hi there, B. How's it going? Pretty good, thank you. How about you? Can't complain. So, I've been doing some penetration testing on our database systems, and I found a few vulnerabilities. Oh no, that doesn't sound good. What did you find? Well, for starters, your password was 12,345. I think we need to work on that. Laughs, yeah, I guess I got a little lazy with my passwords. Thanks for pointing that out. No problem. But seriously, we need to beef up our security. I also found some SQL injection vulnerabilities that we need to fix. I see. What do you suggest? Well, the first step is to update all of our software to the latest versions. That should take care of any known vulnerabilities. Then, we need to do some code review and make sure that we're not leaving any openings for attackers. Got it. Thanks for your help, A. Eh? I'm really glad we have someone like you to keep us secure. It's my pleasure, B. You know, it's funny, sometimes I feel like a professional hacker, just without the criminal record. Laughs, yeah, I can imagine. But I'm glad you're on our side. Me too. And hey, if you ever need help coming up with a secure password, just let me know. Will do. Thanks again, A. Hey. hey, have you ever tried ramen noodles before? Yeah, I love them. Ramen noodles are my go-to when I'm in a rush but still need something filling. Same here. Sometimes, I just want something quick and satisfying, and ramen noodles are perfect for that. I know, right? Plus, there's so many different ways to prepare them. You can add veggies, eggs, or even meat. Absolutely. And have you ever tried adding sriracha sauce for an extra kick? Oh my gosh, I haven't, but that sounds amazing. I'll definitely have to try that next time. Definitely give it a try. And have you ever had soba noodles? They're made from buckwheat flour and are a bit different than ramen noodles. I have tried soba noodles before, and I really like them. They have a unique texture and flavor. Yes, they're a little bit heartier than ramen noodles, but equally delicious. They're great for a cold day to warm you up. That's a great idea. I'll have to make some soba noodles the next time I'm feeling under the weather. Definitely. And have you ever had udon noodles? They're thicker than the other two and are perfect for stir-fry dishes. Yes, I've had udon noodles before. They're so versatile and can be used in so many different dishes. Exactly. Whether you want something quick and simple, or a more elaborate dish, there's a noodle out there for everyone. I definitely agree with that. And it's great that noodles are so affordable too. Yes, they're a budget-friendly option, but still provide so much flavor and satisfaction. Noodles really are the perfect food, aren't they? They really are. I could talk about noodles all day long. Me too. Now I'm hungry, I think I might go make some ramen noodles. That sounds like a great idea, I might do the same. Hi there. Are you enjoying the eruption viewing? Oh yes. It's amazing to witness the raw power of nature. I know, right? It's like the earth is trying to speak to us in its own language. Absolutely. But it's also a bit scary to think about how destructive it can be. True, but as long as we take necessary precautions, it's safe to observe from this distance. 
Have you ever been to other volcanoes before? Yes, I have been to Mount Etna in Italy and Mount Vesuvius near Pompeii. Wow, that's impressive. How does this one compare? Each volcano has its own unique character, but Hawaii's Kilauea is especially active and dramatic. I can definitely see that. Do you know how often it erupts? Its activity level varies, but it's been continuously erupting since 1983. Oh wow, that's remarkable. It's crazy to think that we're standing on a constantly evolving landscape. Absolutely. Hawaii has some of the most fascinating geological features in the world. I'm definitely learning a lot on this trip. It's so cool to see science in action. It's the perfect blend of education and entertainment. I'm glad you're enjoying your visit. Definitely am. Thanks for all your help, too. You're a great assistant. You're welcome. I'm here to make your vacation as enjoyable as possible. Hi there, how's your day been so far? Pretty good, just driving folks around like you. Where to today? I'm heading into Taipei to do some shopping and meet up with some friends. Have you driven there before? Oh yeah, I'm familiar with the ins and outs of Taipei. You got any favorite places to shop? Well, I've heard about this night market in Sherlin that has really good food and clothing stalls. Have you ever been there? Sherlin Night Market? Oh, you betcha. It's one of the most popular night markets around. You're gonna have a blast there. Awesome. I'm getting excited just thinking about it. Do you have any recommendations for what I should try out there? Definitely the stinky tofu. It's a smelly dish, but it's got an unforgettable taste. And if you like bubble tea, there are tons of shops selling it there. Stinky tofu? Hmm, I'll have to give it a try. And I love bubble tea. Thanks for the tips. No problem. Just be warned, the crowds at the night market can get pretty crazy, especially on weekends. That's good to know. I'll be sure to arm myself with some patience. By the way, have you heard any good jokes lately? Hmm, let me think. Oh yeah, I saw this one on the internet. Why was six afraid of seven? Why? Because seven, eight, nine. Laughs. Laughs, that's a good one. Here's one for you. Why did the tomato turn red? I don't know, why? Because it saw the salad dressing. Laughs. Laughs, that's clever. You know, I always enjoy a good laugh with my passengers. It makes the ride more enjoyable. I completely agree. It's nice to have a friendly chat on my way to my destination. Hey, we're almost there. Thanks for the ride and the great conversation. No problem, have a great time at the night market and with your friends. Take care. Wow, this is a beautiful place to hunt. What do you think we'll catch today, B? I'm hoping for some juicy pheasants or maybe some wild boar. What do you have in mind to cook? I was thinking of making a delicious stew with whatever we catch. Maybe add some mushrooms and herbs to enhance the flavor. That sounds like a great idea. And to make it even better, we can gather some wild berries to make a sauce. Brilliant. But first, we need to catch something. Let's split up and cover more ground. Okay, but don't be too quiet. I don't want to accidentally shoot you instead of a bird. Laughs don't worry, I'm a pro. And you make sure not to trip and fall on your cooking knife while gathering berries. Chuckles I'll be careful, don't you worry. Let's reconvene in an hour and see what we've got. Agreed. And let's make sure we have enough for both of us. I don't want to share my stew with you if you haven't caught anything. Smirks you won't have to worry about that. Just make sure you don't burn it. Laughs I'll do my best. See you in an hour. Hey B, have you made any progress on the automated test and deployment process? Yeah, I've been working on automating the testing process using Selenium and JMeter. Nice. That's a great start. What's the next step? Well, we need to integrate the test automation with our deployment process. Right. That'll make things a lot smoother. I think we should use Jenkins as our continuous integration and deployment tool. Agreed. Jenkins is always in demand in the market too. Yes. And it's a great tool for parallel and distributed testing. Definitely. How about the cost of using Jenkins? It's open source, so no worries there. Plus, it's easy to integrate with other tools and plugins. Excellent. What about the QA team? Will they be on board with this change? I've already talked with them, and they're excited to start using automation to speed up testing and deployment. Awesome. How do we make sure the whole team is on the same page? I suggest we hold a training session where we'll demonstrate the tools and processes involved. Sounds like a plan. 
I'll schedule it for next week. Great. We can also work together to develop a best practices guide for everyone to follow. Yes. That will ensure consistency across projects and make the whole process easier to manage. Exactly. And we can also monitor and measure the performance of our automated testing and deployment to make sure there are no issues. That's a great idea. We not only want to make the process faster, but also more reliable. Agreed. I think we're on the right track to achieving our automation goals.